Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, mm. Mm, mm. we have a very special, mm, special, <sighs> taking a sip of his coffee, special guest, Mr. Salema Masakela is with us. Yes, I, I am. <laughs> How are you, dude? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm really great. I, I I walked down the sidewalk to to come here, and I started to really appreciate the what this moment is for me in my journey oh. period in life. And um, I'm really humbled, man. I'm humbled and honored uh, to be here. So, to answer your question, I'm great. Well, <laughs> to spin it back on you, we are humbled and stoked that you are here yes no doubt because you have been a part of our lives as well for the past however many years you know what i mean at least long 20, ass time yeah. <laughs> long ass time <laughs> not more yeah definitely long, long ass time. time since both of us had didn't have grays in our face yeah. <laughs> I know. that was the first thing you noticed walking in <laughs> You know, he didn't even say hi. He said, no, "Man, you got the grays and everything." Hold it down with the grays. You know, I'm, I'm embracing that's, it. See, that's something that old folks can say to each other because now we're those dudes, no doubt. And I remember when I used to see like older dudes when we were younger, like whatever thirty, having those conversations, be like old ass motherfuckers, like. And now I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's me. Yeah. That's we. We oh. have arrived. And we. I'm sure no this ep- I'm sure this episode we'll be talking about laundry. We'll be talking about all <laughs> the weather. I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot of old people <laughs> shit too. You know? I was talking to my mom the other day, man. My mom is such she's that person where we have to have a seven minute conversation <laughs> about the weather in Carlsbad. That that's in it. her mind's eye is so much different than what's happening in Los Angeles. Right. Yeah, and it's 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 its own thing. That's you know how it is down here. It's it's different, but you know the clouds. They, they're you know it's. The, I don't know if it's global warming. <laughs> this is your mom. <laughs> yes, my mom. <laughs> it's my mom. Right into it, and I'm like, is that what I have to look forward to from me? Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, but no, no, I'm honored to be here, man. Oh, we do. We're honored to have yeah, you here. Yeah, this is going to be great, yeah. man. And um, speaking of Carlsbad, so you literally, I mean, you were born here, you moved to New York, and then back here, and you stayed in Carlsbad pretty much. Is that For a long time. Yeah. Right, right, right. And that's pretty much how you got into the surf, like, skate culture, right? Is just being in Carlsbad, I assume? Yeah, I started skateboarding. So there was a period between New York and Carlsbad where I we lived in New England. My mother and stepfather were in Massachusetts, specifically in Attleboro, Massachusetts. And it was this school of like, it was a working class town, like work boots, people worked in factories type vibe, very white, and jocked out, Mm. like super fucking jocked out. (laughs) Uh, And and clicky and, and generational families and next to no black people. How old are you at this point? I'm 15. Okay. And the coolest kids in my school were these four kids that looked like no one else. Period. Mm. Mohawk. Fucking uh, safety pins up and down the sides of, of the jeans. Black flags, uh, patches, and the whole thing. This dude, Scott Forbes. Everyone hated him. Okay. <laughs> and you and liked them. And I was like, that's that dude's amazing. <laughs> and they were cool. They had skateboards. And they really took me in because they could see like, oh, he's fucked up here too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott Forbes gave me a, a, a skateboard magazine and then would let me try his skateboard. And then one day I came to school and he was like, come to my locker. And he, he had gotten a new setup, and he gave me his skateboard. And yeah, now I could, yeah. like, go skate with oh, them. Oh, wow. He gave you his old setup? Yeah. What, what kind of set? What kind of board was it? Do you remember? Uh, well, I don't remember what it was. Big whale tail. Mm. Don't remember what it was. But that, I didn't know anything about the, the culture, per se, but these three dudes were hardcore, and they taught me to skate. Mm. And so, you know, I'd go hang out with them and trying to learn how to do ho-hos and... Um, learning how to like skate off of curbs and uh they taught me how to jump off of my porch and land on my, my board and that's what i did all day okay so like acid drops like and acid stuff. drops yeah. and like trying to learn how to do backside grabs and tweak them out like the, what i saw in the pictures and then just land the flat but when you're a kid 
it's the coolest thing oh, yeah. ever and you're yeah. and you're also like rocket man so you don't feel anything and that was that helped me get that helped me get through this very awkward social period in in life and the, and then i started so i skated to and from school mm. so and i lived like maybe two miles from my school so my my parents were like we ain't driving you kind of thing no school bus yeah, yeah so the skateboard became was also like an active piece of transportation and i learned just on my own how to navigate and how to push and i had good balance i would like had been a gymnast and played basketball and when i got to carlsbad which i didn't know what carlsbad was or meant or anything like when i came home from school and my mother and stepfather told me that we were moving to california to this place called carlsbad it was like mid-march i think of the school year Okay. Like think of like your social. Sh- I had a girl. Mm. It's like what do you, what do you mean? Like, what's Carlsbad? What, what, <laughs> what about Dawn? <laughs> what about my, what about my cross country queen, Dawn? <laughs> and I looked it up in, in an encyclopedia, a, AKA eighties Google. <laughs> yeah, a book mm-hmm. that people sold your parents and that door to door, and Carlsbad was like had a motocross track. Was all I knew but okay. there was nothing about where we were going other than that and we get there and it turns out to be this place it's like on the ocean like everyone looks like out of a, a, a Hughes movie <laughs> you know I, this kid came by for we're unpacking the U-Haul on my street which was a, this cul-de-sac that went up the top of a hill so like two miles away from the ocean and you walk out of your house we'd gotten there at night and you look outside and you're like palm trees holy shit the ocean this is like a movie mm-hmm. there's like the ocean shimmering a few miles away and then this dude comes by on a purple honda revo scooter sandals board shorts <laughs> tank top and crazy waterfall ha- haircut shaved down the side gelled up books between his legs and like he drives by and eh, eh. And throws me the first time I've seen a real life shock. <laughs> <laughs> a real life shock. <laughs> and then like woof, goes away. Did you hear about the shock before? <laughs> no, I just like what? What was that? What was yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, this and, is it. And my brain, as we're unloading the U-Haul, is he can't be going to school. And then the next day, my mom brings me to school, and everybody looks like him. <laughs> and I'm in Tim's. Levi's <laughs> and a flannel fucking shirt. Oh and I got God. home and I was like, Mom, what are we doing? I total upgrade. Like this shit has to change. Cause everyone's dressed like a beach movie. Sure. Yeah. Did you go to Carlsbad High? I went to Carlsbad High School. Oh no way. Yeah. yeah the Carl- gap. Yeah, the gap. <laughs> I was there when they built the gap. No way. <laughs> yeah. So I graduated in eighty nine. They built the gap like they started building and doing that construction for the lower level end of my junior year and then it became famous damn wow yeah it's crazy so you got a full makeover the the first day you were there as soon as i got um, my my, also my mother and stepfather didn't have money so like we went to the shop like uh like we went to what was surf ride now was then hobie and she's like 40 dollar t-shirts like are you out of your mind and i shit you not my mother took me to sears okay and we went and looked into whatever like their cool California section was, <laughs> bought me a bunch of shit that I had no idea how horrible the shit was that she bought me. Oh man! And now I show up, and folks are just like, ah, ah, ah <laughs> what? You're better off in the Tim's. I was the, better yeah. off in what I was wearing before. Yeah. I was getting shit from the essays. Everybody, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm trying over here. I'm trying. I'm trying. Man. Yeah, but anyway, you get to this place and you you realize like everyone's got a skateboard and everybody surfs and this is I had no idea what I had moved into, mm-hmm. but it's I slowly started when you realize that skateboarders are as cool as or cooler than the quarterback in your school, <laughs> that's when you're like, "Oh, okay." There was this dude in my in my class whose dad was one of the owners of Airwalk wow he had a crazy tricked out jeep like m- at the time that was probably like a thirty thousand dollar build on his jeep jeez and uh it an airwalk license plate Custom. he played on the <laughs> on the football team 
And someone was like, yeah, his dad owns Airwalk. I didn't know what Airwalk was. And I was like, what's Airwalk? What's an Airwalk? <laughs> guy's like, my shoes, bro, like Airwalk. And you're like, oh. <laughs> this is okay. And this is where, this is, this is where you live. Yeah, it was. Um, what a, it's culture shock. Culture yeah, shock. And then sense. same kind of thing, though. Like they ended up being cool to me. Yeah. Um, started to make some skate friends. But I really fell in love with surfing. Right, right. Surfing was like. That was my thing. Yeah. And that makes sense, though, because, I mean, I feel like Carlsbad is more of a surf town than a skate town. You come up here, it's kind of half and half. You know what I mean? You had to go inland or go down south to, to, to like, Pacific Beach yes. to get, like, hardcore skate. skate. Like, you, you kids skated in Carlsbad, and then the waves were good, mm -hmm. and you went surfing. It was what you did in between, like, to skate to the homie's house, to, like, pretend surf and, like, launch off off driveways like that was my thing was oh, like, curb cuts. like little curb cuts mm -hmm. and then like who could do the best air out of the driveways mm. and then like the waves are good and like you're just you're just surfing yeah um but i always i always because of of that east coast relationship with skateboarding i always like had a better kinship mm. under understood skaters better i think sure sure mm. and then fast forward to was it was your first like gig in skateboarding when you worked at Transworld? Yeah, that was your first like inter introduction into the working world, into the industry. Into I, the I, industry I I yeah. worked at Hobie briefly. Okay, um, but that's more of a shop, right? Yeah, the shop. Yeah, but um, my first job was answering phones as a receptionist at Transworld, and I had met. I was I was bussing tables at a restaurant in Encinitas called the Potato Shack. And this dude came in with a bunch of his friends and they all had badges on for the ASR trade show. Mm. And they were like having breakfast before going to the trade show. And at this point, I had heard about the trade <laughs> show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta get the ASR, dude, and get samples. <laughs> 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 totally. Your friend's uncle had a job at a company and he came home with like a new fucking wetsuit. And you're like, what? For free? <laughs> Or for seventy percent off on the last day, we got to get down. There. I feel like those yeah. badges were hard to get too. They were. Super hard. Yeah. Well, back then, it, it was wasn't super like hard. yeah, it wasn't like agenda. So or something. Hard. Now, we were sharing those things. Bro. Getting yeah. in, bro. The security <laughs> in, in, yeah. in oh. they were at the they, convention they, center. They were, a different they were ready to rock heads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were definitely. They were paid well. Game. They yeah. were like, please try, please try to finesse us. <laughs> <laughs> we, it was real. It was. And I, so there's this table with like five people with badges and it wasn't in my section so i said to my man greg whips volleyball player from from canada super funny dude i was like whips i need that table he's like can't help you canadian funny can't help you bro uh, no. it's yeah it's uh you know it's, it's, it's not in your section and i was like those are my people give me the table come on i'll just trade you this table and he looks at me straight face five bucks <laughs> I was like, "What? Five bucks?" And it's Saturday, like busy, 40, busy. I'm like, five bucks, or we're not having this conversation." I was like, "Fuck you, man!" Five bucks. Gave him the five bucks. Now I'm taking care of the table, talking to him, broing down. They all work at Transworld. I'm like, "What? <laughs> Y'all work at the fucking Bible?" And getting to know them, they're on the way to the trade show. And one person in particular, I really hit it off with. Oh, by the way, I gave him like free orange juices and coffee. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. You got to butter him up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're the bro. You're the <laughs> there you homie. Go. There you go. So, yeah, you gave guys, him the shotguns. Yeah. 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 Right. Hard yeah. shotguns. <laughs> you guys know how to pay for it. One guy uh, started coming back. He turned out that he lived in Encinitas. And on like the, I don't know, fourth time when he's there, he's just like, I'm 22 years old. He's like, what are you doing with your life, man? Hmm. Like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, you know, at that point, I was I was working at the Potato Shack on the weekends. I worked at Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach at night. And I was, like, bank telling, like, two days a week. Not too much. Just enough to, like, not be poor. So you really had no direction. No mm -hmm. direction. Other than, like, surf, surf and snowboard yeah. as much as I can and skate a little bit. But that was, I was just, I got, I got it late. And when I started surfing snowboarding and skating and like got introduced to the culture like the shit took over my entire existence mm. you know and as it as, as it, it does, yeah. as it does everyone yeah. but for me it was like this shit was happening in my senior year of high school 
So suddenly when college came around, et cetera, and people were like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to stay right here. Mm-hmm. Get some random ass jobs and keep going. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Right. And my parents were like, what's... <laughs> My poor dad was like, "What are you, what are you doing, man?" By the way, your dad's like a famous musician. That yeah. we'll that we'll get into yeah. for sure because mm-hmm. we have to. It's, it's we'll get into that, it's but um, yeah, he was kind of confused by me at a certain point. He was like, "Listen, I don't know what's going on with you, but if you love this thing so much, you got to figure out a way to get close to it." That was his thing. That's good advice, actually. Yeah. He literally was like. You gotta fucking figure out a way to get close to this thing, man. Because no, no one likes a fucking broke surfer. <laughs> <laughs> that was his, his pep talk. That was his pep talk. Amazing. Don't like, be that guy. Direct. You don't want to be that fucking guy. And I like his attitude. It was he was straight up, but yeah. my father was like incredibly passionate. So if, if me not having like drive attached to the passion meant that it wasn't really passion, that I was just like wasting time. It's a hobby. It's a fucking hobby. It. it Make it from hobby to passion so that it can, you can actually make it a part of your life. Yeah. And this dude that kept coming back in who asked me, like, what are you doing with your life? Offered me a job at Transworld. Who was this guy? Chad Denena. Okay. The founder of Nixon Watches. Oh, wow. Who at the time <laughs> was a junior ad sales rep at Transworld. That's, that's the amazing. tie to Nixon right there. That's the tie to Nixon. Like if you see, they just posted something on Nixon of the 25 years with the shipment of the first you're boxes. You're in one yeah. of the photos. Yeah, I took the photo. But you're also in I'm one also of the photos. And I'm also in one yeah. of the photos. Like I, he called me like, they're here. I'm like, I'm on my way. We unloaded the truck together. That's a funny that's thing because so I was always wondering, because I, we know, I mean, we just uh, interviewed Patrick O'Dell mm. who did the documentary about mm-hmm. that. And we're looking at these photos I'm like, that's Sal- Salema. Like how... I didn't know if you were a, like an early investor or, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like are a there part of the company. One. Like yeah. here. Yeah. Ooh. That's my. Those are your you, boys. You know, you get a person who sees something in you. Like we've all had that yeah. person, mm-hmm. you know, the, for, for everybody in skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Someone who was like, okay, let me, let me fucking help you. Definitely. And that was Chad for me. He's a good dude. Great dude. Yeah. And he was like, look. He was. He wanted me to come in as a as a junior ad sales rep. My dumbass was so like freaked out that this guy offered me a job that I didn't call him back for like four days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My roommates like I lived with three dudes in typical times yeah. in Solana Beach, and this guy, my bro, comes home from work. He's like. Did you call that fucking guy from Transworld yet, dude? <laughs> I love his Carlsbad. I love the Carlsbad that's bro very accent. Good, that's very the good Carlsbad voice. Straight yeah. up. Dude. You, have to, you always do the shaka when you're doing the voice. Did too. you call the guy from Carl from, from Transworld yet? And I was like, no, I didn't. I don't, I don't. He's like, what are you fucking doing, bro? You gotta call that guy. I'm like, it's Transworld. Who are you living with? Napoleon Dynamite? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Dylan James. Think about yeah. like 90s sure. North County. Yeah. No doubt. Like I'm being light. <laughs> Dude, and Transworld was the biggest. It was. It was. It was the biggest thing on earth. Yeah. So I finally call him. I call him, and he says, "Yeah, man, I told you to call me on Monday. Like we hired somebody." Oh. oh. Ouch. And I'm like, "Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me!" He's like, "Yeah, you blew it. Sorry." Click. Like real short conversation. Damn. All my friends are making fun of me. Can't believe you blew that. You could be working at Transworld. Like working at Transworld literally could lead to you. Like girls would fuck with you. <laughs> You're big time on the strength. Right. Like that's that's where you work. Mm-hmm. Like okay, cool. We can have a conversation. That was it. Was that powerful? And three days later, that Monday, he calls me. Like, message on the on the answer machine. Hey, it's Chad. Call me. Call him back. Hey, look. Mind you, junior ad sales rep in 1993 at Transworld, Skate and Snowboarding Magazine, you're instantly about to be pockets. Like he was trying to onboard me into a lifestyle Mm. and into a career. He calls me back and says, so our receptionist decided that she's going back to college and we need someone to answer the phones. I can't guarantee you anything, but if you get in here and hustle, maybe you'll be able to find your way. And the fact that he saw enough in me to be like, this idiot, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I still believe in him. So I'm going to see if he can, if 
and I jumped the I jumped on that one. Sure. Yeah, I'll come sit at the front desk. But whatever sort of weird fear I had about being getting such a major opportunity that like froze me for a few mm, days. Yeah. And I guess it's like some weird law that you know the universe keeps throwing you maybe in position throwing you in position and it was like all right well you don't want the the a situation well we'll give you the d situation and see where you can go from there and it ended up being exactly where i needed to be did Mm -hmm. you climb the ladder over there i did did you yeah what what did you get get up to i worked the front desk and then people were just like yo this dude who's this dude at the front desk is cool i'd go around to you know grant britain and swift and be like hey do you guys can i do anything for you guys yeah. like oh, when it was awesome. slow yeah. and you know, i'm stuffing envelopes or i'm sorting or arranging and, and labeling slides for grant fucking britain Sick. and dave swift and john foster who was on the snowboard side did you see um, a lot of people coming in like all the pros back yeah then? everybody like uh, snowboarders surfers skaters Ev- you 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 <laughs> name it they they were coming in I remember the first time that Tony Hawk called for for Grant, and he's like, "Hey, I'm looking for for, for Grant Britton. Uh, this, this this is Tony." I was like, "I literally was like, Tony Hawk." <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Tony Hawk. I was like, "Yeah, just one second, please." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" You know, like <laughs> uh, Grant Britton, Tony Hawk on line one. I'm Grant Britton, see- Tony Hawk on line one. Like, oh, there you go. <laughs> We got a code red. We got a code red. <laughs> Hold on, Tony. I'll go find him. The hawk yeah. is calling. You know, Grant, um, Grant, Grant. Pause. Pause podcast. Okay. I need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to us by Athletic Greens. Ooh, we love Athletic Greens. We do. This is gold in a box, right? Love this stuff. <laughs> With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and Kelly's favorite thing in the whole world, Aptogens. I love aptogens. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Well, not only that. Ooh, tell me, Drone. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Nothing budget, only nothing, buttery, right? Nothing budget, yeah, please. Yeah. But it also supports better sleep quality and recovery as well. Tons of people take multivitamins, but mm. it's important that you choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And it's also better when you, you know, uh, not to have a full medicine cabinet full of, you know, supplements. Oh, man. You know, wait, wait, so I can get rid of all my supplements? Yeah, I was just over at Kelly's house the other day, opened the cap, I was hit with supplements. Get the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them in there. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is just visit athleticgreens.com slash nine club. That's N-I-N-E-C-L-U-B. Again, athleticgreens.com slash nine club. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today, which is. is Athletic Greens. <laughs> Take over your health now. So I started skating again, like for real, working there, because mm-hmm. um, across the street was the. Um, come on, Salema, I just spaced. Tracker. Yes. Tracker. The tracker. Tracker um, was across the street, and they built a park. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was skating with like Tobias Walker. Oh yeah. And Adrian Lopez, like every day. So wow. I'd go to lunch. Those dudes would be there. Um, Ridgeway was mentoring. Like, those were his little soldiers. Mm-hmm. And so I would go and skate with these, what I then realized were, like, straight-up savages. I was like, oh, so this is what modern day... Tobias Walker, if anyone's, like, if there are any old heads out there, like, I I just... breaks my heart that it didn't work. Mm. But that dude was from the future. And him and Adrian, like, were both these little fucking dudes yeah, and they were was... thick as thieves sure and i would skate with them you know and then like you never knew who was going to show up like there's an ad a trans world ad of jamie thomas doing a frontside flip uh in the mini ramp and i'm in the i'm in the back deck props like <laughs> in some horribly gigantic shorts um <laughs> but those were that's what life was 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 like and everybody was coming through that um, was a climax distribution right it was climax yeah yeah and they used to have all the castle contests back there yep. too right yep 
And so that's what really built my yeah. This is uh, Tobias Walker yeah, Tobias. and Travis, Trevor, uh, Trevor Prescott. He wrote for Invisible Skateboards, yes, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, he was. Look at this dude. He was nice. What? Yep. And it's so cool. Like I was a kook, and they would just get so fired up to skate with me <laughs> that I'd be like, as soon as it was my lunch break. <laughs> I just oh, head over there, mob over there, <laughs> um, and 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 dip in with those dudes, man. What a sweet kid! I think he was from SF. How long did you work over at Trans World? I worked there for uh, probably three years. I, I ended up doing product sales. Okay. So that was like a, actually the key job. Hmm. So the woman who was running uh, the product department, she's like, "You're coming to work for me." Her name was Diane Launder. She told the HR woman, he doesn't answer the phones anymore. He works for me. I'm she, picturing this lady with like a cigarette and like chain a... Smoker. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> chain smoker. Yeah. Chain smoker. I don't know. I don't know why. His voice described you. She was a real chain smoker. I had I'd subbed in for someone one day and to she needed someone to sell some video magazines okay. on the phone. And she's like, here's your book. Uh, and you, you call the shop, this is how many order they ordered last time, and da, 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 da. if you sell 20 videos, I'll be happy. So I got on that afternoon, they put someone else on the phones, and I sold like 300. 300? She was extremely <laughs> happy. In the afternoon, and she went straight to HR and said, he doesn't work for you anymore, he works for me. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, I was I was there with, uh, and that the next day, like, so now I'm calling shops all over the country. Mm -hmm. You have this book, right? And I'm selling them video magazines. I'm selling them transwell skateboarding hats and t-shirts and sweatshirts. Okay. And in turn, you're learning like about communities and scenes and who's just who's been on tour there and like what's their shop like and what brands they're interested in, etc. And now because I'm talking to all the shops in the whole country, I got information that no one else has, and I'm building mm -hmm. relationships. You know, I'd be on the phone with Sid from Water Brothers for like an hour, and he'd like call me randomly, be like, "Hey, it's the package. What's going on out there?" <laughs> and like, I never. And then at the trade show, he comes to me, and I find out like, "Oh, you're like a goddamn legend, right?" <laughs> um, and so that that was probably the most valuable experience for me that year and a half or so that I was working for her. Unfortunately, it was a very dysfunctional relationship. She was crazy. Okay. Um, she used to throw shit at me. Like, oh, no. Shit. I could have sued now for oh, like wow. what I went through with her. And then I went into the video magazine production department um, where I was working with Matt Goodman mm -hmm. when, they when they decided to, after years of 401, to be like, we're going to do our own thing. That looks easy, which it was not at all. Uh, what do you mean? Like making like this certain trans world videos? Yeah, like trans world like, video magazines. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then I left there to go and I met Mirko Mangum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one day uh, sur surfing. I met another black guy who surfed. This is a funny story. I was at Seaside uh, in Seaside Beach. The waves were shitty. It was like two foot. I'm out there by myself. And I see, I look down the beach and there's another person in the water. But far enough that I can't really tell. I catch a left, I kick out, and I'm paddling back out. I'm like, is that dude black? <laughs> And sure enough, like he starts paddling towards me, and then we both realize like we're both black. <laughs> you start going faster and Bias, faster, like, faster like, towards like, each other, like like boat waking <laughs> towards each other. Like, hey, hey, who are you? Who are you? And we just obviously we're having a laugh because anytime you see another black guy in the water, yeah, that shit is like a moment. <laughs> let alone just you. This is like we gotta like mark this day in our in our lives. And he's like, um. My name's Mirko Mangum, and I just retired pro skateboarder, and I work at Planet Earth, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I work at Transworld, but I want to get out of there. He's like, ah, you're coming to work for us. You're cool. <laughs> Wait, when, how old was he at this time? This is like probably, what, 22? He's 21? like, like, this is 2000, and this is 95, 90, 95, uh, 96. Maybe 19. Yeah, so he's 96. Like, So, no, he's, he's in his 20s. Like, at this point, I'm like 24, 23, 24. They were retiring um, early back then. Though. Yeah, they, like yeah. real early. Like he still had a board, but he wasn't. He also was like, admittedly, like, I'm Check good. Him yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good. And he wanted to make money, and he was doing sales. Yep. Yeah. Mirko, he, he killed it, bro. Yeah. Killed it. Yeah. 
So did you instantly, because you were team manager for... So I got a job in sales. Mirko, oh, okay. sales. Mirko uh, was, was doing sales on the West Coast. And uh, I did sales on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had like, I had the experience, right? So I got all these relationships from, uh, from at, at Transworld. I know every single shop. Still so now, now I'm calling, calling the them. people. Like, I'm at Earth. Mm. And they're like, fuck. <laughs> You're calling the East Coast shop and they're like, fuck earth specifically we had a demo here fuck matchner oh. <laughs> wow here we go oh, oh, hey. ball. <laughs> and that's when you start to hear like stories oh, no. about like i'm like who's match who's schnur and why is it that every shop i call has a story about him just going crazy wasted at the demo right and then I met Schnur and I got it. I'm like, oh, you're awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I remember the first time, like, I had, okay, this is a relationship that I got to repair. But that's that's how I got into that's how I got into like s- the skateboarding and of mm-hmm. uh, the industry. And you know, I'll never forget Mirko like calling me and being like, yeah, Chris wants to meet you. And I was like, Miller, Chris, Chris Miller wants to meet me. Mm. Just thinking of like the Upland photo um, and just all everything about me i remember being in his office and is he's inst- interviewing me and i swear to you like I, he just asked me questions I'm like yeah so um yeah this is what i did there and like i couldn't i couldn't believe that like i'm i'm having a conversation about whether or not chris miller wants me to work there for him. <laughs> is this for, <laughs> for planet earth or planet audio earth and rhythm this is earth, pre-audio okay. but you eventually became team manager yeah eventually became team manager of at earth rhythm audio Hurricane. Damn, I helped Chris. I helped Chris start. Um, tornado. There was. Did I say tornado? I say hurricane? Yeah, tornado. Tornado wheels. Tornado Is wheels. that what hurricane. it was? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tornado, and then we did uh, Mercury. Earth <laughs> Mercury trucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> we did. We also did a snowboarding out of wear because um, nice. I took all the experience again that I learned at Trans World, and I was like, "Yeah, we could do this." Right. Took Chris to like the snowboarding industry conference, put help put together a team, and yeah, at a certain point, you know, and then Chris surfed, which was awesome. So he all he wanted to do was surf every morning. How was it working for uh, Audio and those companies? It was crazy. It was fun. Well, but they were I, big. I mean, Audio was it was the, huge, yeah. the biggest back then. It was it was it was it was mad. I mean. You know what it's like being like Tony Hawk, being like, "Where's my box?" Ah! Like, okay, I got, we, I got. Where are you? Okay, we'll, we'll get we'll get it to you. Um, well, did you do Hawk shoes as well? Out no, of there? Okay, I was okay. out of there by that uh, point. I left to start Alpha Numeric. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. So you were there, rhythm, like when? Yeah, Shaney. I was, was. I was. I was there with Shaney, uh, r- rhythm. Felix. Um, Felix. Felix. Yeah. Um, with Jose Gomez and. Wow. And Ty Evans, I was there mm-hmm. when Ty made the first uh, rhythm video. Oh wait, you wait! Were, you were for Genesis? Yeah, I was there. I was there. I was there hanging out with Ty Evans in the edit suite at like three in the morning as he's like working with all this new future technology right. that is gonna blow people's faces off. Because that was, video was gnarly. What? That was a game changer. Yeah, that is crazy. So I was, I was there for all of that. And you it was, was you were supposed to be there, bro. It yeah. was, and again, like this shit right here. I remember, like, just that spinning logo mm-hmm. with the wood. That was groundbreaking. <laughs> like, no one had even seen that shit yet. And I remember Jose and Ty. They were like Jose Gomez, Jose Gomez, yeah. and Ty Evans. They were like they had this special relationship with with each other. It's like the synergy, going yeah, like on super there, synergy, yeah. like with the nerd tech graphics and then the film. And see, a Gomez and Evans mm-hmm. film. And they were like, come, come inside. Get off the phone. I gotta show you something. <laughs> and I come in and it'd be dark. And then I remember just that logo spinning. And all of us be like, oh my God, Bart Ma. Yeah, fucking Jeff Taylor. Mm-hmm. Damn. Danny Montoya. Look at Felix being like, I'm still 20. <laughs> <laughs> Sh- Danny, I mean, Shani wow. was... Shani was so, so, so good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Shani skate when I found out in real time that Shani could skate vert. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? What do you, what do you, why don't, you should be in the X Games. Like, he what? everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was. He was the first, like, street skater that, yeah, like, actually could skate. In my, like, in my generation, like, oh, he can 
transition into a yeah, and it's like getting vert get yeah down. and it you totally get down seamlessly mm. yeah seamlessly so like Barra was that for the generation before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i don't th- even think that people realize how ill Barra was at vert but i mean yo yeah. felix was nice man yeah felix was great felix has skills too no doubt so you're at you're doing all so the, I'm managing all these all these fucking things. Darryls. But then when you <laughs> when, when you went to when you went to audio getting folks out of bed in those days. Oh wow! I don't even want to. Uh, yeah, it's a bottle of Advil right there. So when you're you just so then you went to audio and then you were just audio or were you doing everything? I was doing a little bit of everything. Okay. okay. And then um, at that same time, uh, Aliasha. Moore and I had become friends mm-hmm. because he was doing some shit at I met him when he first got to to California and started working at Drawers. And we hooked up thick as thieves. We ended up having like a lot of mutual friends mm. from New York City as kids. Yep. Like my first girlfriend in elementary school was his girlfriend in high school. No way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I'm okay. like, what? How, how did you Chelsea? find that out? Shit. Like we just started talking. I was like, did we? It was literally like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> and we became really, really, really close. And also like there's not a lot of black people in, in North County, San Diego. So like you get to sit in some reflection. Totally. And, you know, Ali was just like, he was just on. Like hip hop, punk rock, whatever it was, like he was he was an expert in 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 the intersections right. of culture and it was just dope to have a friend who could like put you on uh to all shit. the new things yeah no doubt the new things and and also how did we get here right you know mm-hmm. which was he was a very much a st- young steward of the culture yeah and making sure that you honored it and that we started having a historian type yeah, yeah yeah like a like this artist historian yeah and then we started having conversations about doing a documentary about like what would it be like to tell the story of all the different like dope black skaters, surfers, and snowboarders in history? Because at that point, like there were just still been handfuls, mm-hmm. um, and really put into context what that journey looked like. So we started having these weird these meetings at coffee shops with Ali and myself. Was this late nineties? This is like ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, yep. Atiba, mm-hmm. Akko. By the way, when I was calling shops at Transworld there was this shop in Colorado, This uh, these three shops, I forget the name of them, but one of the buyers was Akko and Atiba. And I asked, <laughs> called the shop and like asked for these kids, ended up becoming best homies with them over the phone and literally like helped them connect with Grant. Amazing. And I was like, Grant, you gotta meet these guys. And I was waiting for them. I was talking to them as they drove out to California in the green bug wow and i was waiting for them in the parking lot the first one to welcome Akko and the team <laughs> to california oh, to trans sick. sick yeah um but anyway we're having this meeting about about making this movie and then within that you start obviously talking about all the different brands that have affected mm-hmm. shit over the years and you know you're in this this you're not realizing at the time but like, yo, we got we're on some like crazy nights at the round table as far as energy and expertise and talent. And Ali, he says to me, like one day he calls me, he's like, yo, we starting our own shit. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, we starting our own shit. Like, don't get too comfortable. And I was like, bro, I just got I just got <laughs> here. Got, got here. Like I had left Earth and then came back as team manager. I was also the team manager for Reebok's box. Oh um, wow. Yes, that whole fiasco. So I left Earth because I got an offer. That was my first team manager job. Okay. To go to Reebok. And so I had a satellite office office in Carlsbad. I would fly out to Boston, help them do development. I had Neil Hendricks on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a few others helping, the, helping, this, helping this company that's making the AI like Helix yeah. dope oh, ass time, yeah. shoe like that Amazing. groundbreaking shoe yeah, yeah, that those. can't figure out for a, a million bucks how to make a skate shoe it's like the most frustrating thing ever but I was team manager for BMX skate surf and snow it was a wild time wait what yes what yes. I didn't realize that was Reebok that, that was Reebok that. bro what do you think the box is the I don't I never even thought of that yeah. dude crazy yeah that was very short lived way too yeah. Yeah. way too yeah. early those were like bowling shoes yeah i mean they tried yeah 
Yeah, at a certain point, effort. I remember the last samples when they finally, when Reebok shut us down was like we had finally gotten to the shoe. I was like, mm, we, oh, we're done. We're and, done. You, and you're done. I feel I mean, like Nike tried a bunch of times. Like, yeah, people, they yeah. tried. Mm -hmm. I feel like sure. Reebok, all they needed was their classic silhouettes. Straight and that up. was That's it. What I was going to say. It, I, I literally would walk them through their archives and be like, this one, <laughs> this one. Yeah. I would fly out skaters with me to help, like, show the designers and they just compre couldn't comprehend that the shit was already there and just needed a little yeah, yeah. I had miracle I had miracle getting paid as a consultant on the side like wow. trying to get all the homies involved and wow. then that the floor dropped out out of me and then I couldn't get a job like I, I couldn't get a job and I was broke back to earth and Chris was just like Gotcha. gotcha. I got you, son. Come on home. <laughs> Come, on. Come on home. By the way, yeah, while I'm you were on. gone, we started 10 more companies. <laughs> and um, that's how I became team manager there. So I, I went to Reebok to get the team manager experience mm -hmm. and then, and oh. then um, came wow. back to Earth. Wow. When did all this, because you eventually went on, and we're, we're coming into late 90s, right? Which yeah. is early 2000s, coming into like keep being invited on Tony Hawk's. Yeah. gigantic skateboard tour yeah so we start off in numeric and oh i'm sorry we no. were still yeah, 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 yeah. we're still going off in numeric i'm my sorry bad. My we bad. started a little thing <laughs> <laughs> anyway whatever whatever <laughs> alpha numeric i want to get to tony hawk no, yeah <laughs> so we start alpha and um ali comes to me one day and he's like that's it we got the money we're starting alpha numeric okay Do uh, they now i gotta go to chris <laughs> oh, but I just brought you back. How did they come up with that name? It's a great name. Mm -hmm. was that it? was Ollie. Alpha numeric was Ollie. It was Ollie. Yeah, like good. letters and numerals r ruling all of society. Like we're all controlled by letters and numerals and putting it together. And then it was Alpha numeric, the environmental mm. company. Mm. It was amazing. That was a great company. Man. And so, yeah, we, as you know, like we just we went in yeah um you know then i so I, I was team manager marketing director there helped put together and build our team i remember when when apple yard said yes and i was just like yo we got fucking mark apple yard <laughs> big dog like yeah. it's on big dog yeah, at who, that time too it was pretty heavy who still this old ass oh, motherfucker yeah, yeah. To, like still right but mark apple yard 98 99 oh no oh my god bro he was young. That was right when he was coming right. out into the into the scene. People were tripping on right. Yeah, Rip it. that was new power. Yeah, you're like you can do that without looking like you did anything. Mad comfortable, super, comfortable. super sleepy, yeah. Yeah. sleepy power, yeah. but also quietly dunking from the free throw line. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know that was in that, a tank top, in yeah. a tank top, and like yeah. the fit always just like ah. Uh, yeah. Also, like I'm probably gonna need to take your girl. Like, <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Come on, you're you're with me now. How you about know. how about those the ads in the classroom? Those, uh, who, yeah. How did that come? So about? that was that smart, was a smart campaign. That yeah. was a, a concept between um, Ali and and O. And everything again was about that environmental. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, look, Kenny Hughes, damn, Remo, Forrest, Forrest, Kirby, Forrest Kirby, Remo. Um, is that Sava behind him? It was big. No, that's who's Spencer that? Fujimoto. Spencer oh, Fujimoto. Spencer. No, but who's behind Cream? Uh, behind that's Kareem. Forrest. That's Forrest. That's Forrest. That's is, Forrest? Is Forrest. Yeah. yeah, that's Forrest Kirby. Oh, brother? my God. Yeah, that's Forrest. Young Buck. Young my, Buck. My brother was on this, at this time. Your brother was on? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. For BMX? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. Sure was. So you can see, like, everything was about education. So you even look in, like, the... in. By the way, we... Somebody paid off the custodian <laughs> at the school oh, shit. to let us, because we, there's no way we're getting a permit, <laughs> right? Someone uh, paid off the custodian uh, to shoot this. I think Atiba shot this. Um, and yeah, it was all about taking you back to those experiences cutting up in class um, at school. And everybody obviously is wearing Alpha Numeric. This is Jeremy Jones, legendary snowboarder in the front row in the blue beanie. Oh, wow. Russell Winfield next to him. Wow, it's Russell Winfield. Yeah, crazy, it was. Um, yeah, these ads were groundbreaking. You could see the A, a pound 98.99 officers on the, mm. on the back mm. there. I yeah, that, that was all the genius of Ali and O. That was when I remember reading this as a kid in like school, mm. just examining and seeing, like, oh, dude, that's that. That's, and then seeing what was going on in the background. And those awesome ads, man. Yeah, this was, 
it was so fun to just be we weren't trying to be disruptive mm-hmm. but like i said like those those meetings that we were having before about helped us sort of conceive what was missing in the industry at the time and then we were just like let's just go in and and force people to have to think yeah and but not only think but just visually it was yes. dope it was dope mm-hmm. like Visual. it didn't matter we 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 could have won awards i mean if you look at when when Virgil Abloh started doing uh, Louis Vuitton, go back and look at his his campaigns. Mm-hmm. They were all it was all based on the ninety eight to two thousand yeah. Alpha American mm-hmm. campaigns, and he like readily was like, yeah, no, this is all Alpha American inspired. Like he had kids, classroom, backpack right. um, yeah. type vibes and energy. Here's another. That was so uh, rad. He was really heavily influenced by the skateboard yeah. industry and culture. This one was this was awesome. The the guy who's posing as like the teacher was the the our financer <laughs> yeah. from from a, this Garmento company He's called like, Inter- I'm, I'm getting in International there. News. Fun fact: Reem couldn't make the shoot, so that is like the first uh, fake. He's photo his Photoshop, he is, he is yes. photoshopped in there. Wait, wait, wait. Where? Which one? So Remo oh, is next. Next, you see Felix up top. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Felix, and then next to him. Oh my is God! You like, Remo. You leave a little space there for him. Uh, yeah, and we photoshopped Remo in. Wow. That's amazing. I think he used a little bit of like of uh, <laughs> Kenny's body type. But oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. And there's Aqua and Atiba yeah, up on the, on, right. on the back back right and. Wow. Yeah, special, man. Really, really, really special. How days. many years did uh, Alpha Numeric go? We were there for four. Four. And then we ran into um, some real problems with our our financiers, mm. with a, our parent company. We were young. We were excited to start a brand. We made horrible deals for ourselves oh, really? as owners. And then you're just like, oh, it's like, a, like some record label shit. Mm-hmm. Ah, and they wanted us from a distribution standpoint our thing was like look we're going to be this sort of Volcom meets North Face of skateboarding and now we were doing snowboarding out of where of action sports but like that's our intersection with like we we come from an an urban urban perspective um a, like a black and brown centered perspective um but also we speak to everybody right and it was working like no one could duplicate our shit. Mm-hmm. You remember what the, no, the energy yeah. was like at the booths? Yeah. Like it shit was psycho. And then we were doing the mixtapes, etc. Up the parties, <laughs> the parties. We no, everything was like everything fully developed was like, in that way. I remember getting pieces and being like, "Damn, this is like really yeah, nice." Yeah, it was it was regular for folks who didn't ride for us. You'd be in their parts to be like dripped in Alpha America, and that's when you're like, "We made it." Yeah. But anyway, how did it drown though? I don't understand. They what? decided they wanted to take our distribution. So our parent company also owned um, Mecca. Okay. Remember, like, yep. Think mm-hmm. Hip Hop, Oversized 5X t-shirts. Um, Mecca and a couple of other brands in that space. And that was the beginning of the tanking of of what was then Hip Hop Streetwear. And so now they're like, okay, how do we make up for this? And they're like, mm-hmm, well, we do have this shiny new thing. And now they want to take our distribution into, like, Mr. Rags oh. and and Dr. J's and yeah. all this shit that like you don't understand that will kill us. Easy. We're trying to build. We went from being we did three million the first year. Amazing. We were a fifteen million dollar company in like year th- year two, like insane. Wow! Did you guys have ownership? It's murky. Mm. Okay, owner owner ish ship, mm. but they they own. They okay. Weird. The lion shit. Crazy. And in what you could call, you know, that young standing on your principles shit, we all sat down and met mm-hmm. after we had been on this call with with the owners of our parent company who were telling us uh, all the ways in which they were going to blow the brand up and we were foolish to try and challenge them. And we threatened to leave. And they're like, if you leave, you'll be so sad because we're going to turn Alpha American into the biggest brand in the world. And I remember we got off that call. It was like on a speakerphone. We were all huddled up, the whole crew. 
and who's out? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. So we out? We out. All right. Everybody go to your computers. We're drafting up resignation letters. Everyone press send at the same time. Pack up the shit. Wow. Just like that. And that's it. Wow. We out. Hmm. Obviously, they didn't blow it up to the biggest <laughs> company in the world. No, you can't do it without the, the the people that made it what it was. No. It's like, the, yeah. yeah, they especially in that early phase. It's like, nah, man, that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, and it was it was such a we we became we were like Wu Tang, like you know you know how it is when you, when you when you're on it. There's the eras of the teams that you were on where like y'all ate slept and drank you're on the road like it's all for one one for all Mm -hmm. everything else is sort of pushed away because we're living in the depths of this very common goal and it's catching on Mm -hmm. and so we there was no way that any of us could have stayed right no matter how much they were back channel calling us individually being like do you want to make more money (laughs) stay no stay and then we'll hire people around you it'll be great and to answer your question I had started doing some television stuff. Um, I think the first thing that I did was MTV Sports and Music Festival. Ah, that was like my first hosting, big hosting gig. Before How that, are you I, getting that? You have I, no experience. Right. They're just throwing you in there. No, I. So I was doing these. You got to think about like when the X Games started. Then suddenly everyone started scrambling and wanting to put shit on TV that featured our culture. Right. Wait a minute. Here's a quick question. When how long X Games started? Ninety five, and then you get in there. Ninety nine. Okay. Two thousand. Two thousand. Five it, years. No. Ninety nine. Take ninety nine. Yeah. Four 90, years after. Yeah. Okay. Ninety okay, nine. So, I get in there ninety nine. Beginning of ninety nine. Okay. So go on with the everybody scattering. So we all we all scatter, um, and then I had at that point when when Alpha America ended. Mm-hmm. Everyone scatters, and then now for me, it's like, okay, well, I got to just stick with this television thing. No going back to audio and uh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> One more try. One more. Please, please, so, yeah, guys. No. I, at, and at, at that point when Alpha America ended, I was starting to build a little bit of of I of runway. I had done one X Games. Okay. Um, I had done the MTV Sports and Music Festival. And the, to answer your question about experience, I had done this show called bored wild that i had done this show called planet x Mm -hmm. where i made no money it was basically public access light but my announcing experience started at the trade shows watching dave duncan ah okay (laughs) taking in what he's doing taking in what he Mm. what he's doing so i would go and watch duncan at the vert ramp and 90s duncan on the mic that shit was art Mm. like he could command a crowd of thousands or hundreds whether they were skaters and also like people who didn't skate and like pump up the showmanship and he had this thing and so i would just go on my breaks from when i was at a whatever company i was working with i just go out and watch this dude okay and i was fascinated by him and then then he would let me like sit next to him and then i don't know what it was or how it happened but one day he was like hey sal you want to cover for me? It was like a slow demo. Like, you know, that yeah. that morning demo <laughs> where who knows, just getting started. who knows what those dudes had gotten up to the night before. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, are you for real? He's like, yeah. I, no, you, you got this, right? And I was like, okay. And I did it. And I broke into my own version of what I saw Duncan doing, but Ooh. through my lens and with my knowledge of folks in the crowds, et cetera, and it hit. Mm. Like, it hit, it hit. Okay. To the point where ASR was like, <laughs> they were like, so we're going to hire you to, you're going <laughs> to share right. demo time. Like, Duncan kind of, <laughs> he gave me the gift. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, he 100% put me on, but I definitely started eating into his time. Because how did you feel about that? Elated, okay. <laughs> like not nothing. It was nothing against Dave. Like I was grateful for him. I always let him know that I was grateful to him. Um, I I literally count him as the person who gave me my start. Mm-hmm. And and I think it was what I what I admired about Duncan was his relationship to the skaters, 
and the manner in which he would could really showcase the particulars about who they were and what made their skating interesting right in a way that like whether you skated or not and then he like he had the, the you know the the voice the and thing the, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. no he has a very special talent with that that's yeah sure. it's one of one Hands down and so next thing you know asr's every demo like i'm getting i'm getting money at the trade show to, to do like four or five demos over the course of the week and we were now sharing okay. and he never gave me like he never seemed bitter he never was bitter at me about it you know and mm -hmm. and as so that's what really started to give that's how i learned how to do play by play duncan was doing a lot of stuff though yeah, asr no. wasn't his it wasn't gig. his only it was gig. just he, it was just a gig that he it was had. A, yeah he, he was doing world cup skateboarding yeah, etc like he was he was fine yeah but that's where i learned how to commentate mm. but with this wasn't like on TV shows, was no, it? No, this is at the trade show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is just but, in house. But I trip out because going from that to like on TV, isn't though you find a different style of doing it? When you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> <laughs> like on television, uh -huh. you you just go off of what you know and then you adapt to you adapt to like to to the playing field. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like how you if you skated fucking round rails your whole life and now someone hits you with a flat bar, like, all right, I don't know what that is <laughs> and I'm probably going to get bucked and then yeah. I'm going to figure out how to... Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's how it, it, it kind of was with you, you trial by fire. So you're doing this... I, I would assume that X Games is going on at this point yes. in time. And then... And I'm looking at, like, we all are, like, this is trash. Well... Like, we're happy for our friends that they're on TV but also like you're watching it with the volume off you're just like oh my god i think like, it's oh, kind yeah. of the same experience i had with the olympics just recently right just trash you're the just, announcing you're, there was different broadcasts let's just make that clear yeah. there were uh, there were a couple good broadcasters and then yes not so good broadcasters. and the thing with the the thing with i think with x games is they just brought in football and baseball and you know mainstream sports folks they brought in professionals and they didn't know that they there was a whole culture and a thing that came with it so they like we're gonna get our best this is they own the property they weren't trying to destroy their own property mm -hmm. but at a certain point they were like oh yeah, this ain't working. we this is not working we're not connecting we need to go out and find people from this culture and see if we can make them Train them to be professionals. Yeah. Uh -huh. I heard a story that they approached you in a bar, an executive, and you basically told him no. Yes. And you told him what the hell was wrong with X Games. Yes. And you walked out. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> I was, it was at the Van Schiphol Crown of Snowboarding uh, in 90, 98, 90, like, yeah, 98, 99, um, that winter. So it would be late 98. And I read him the riot act and then he offered me a job and i was like no way that's horrible like i would I but here I, I you couldn't. are though you're coming into your own at the asr but x games just had this this taintedness right? yeah Is but also the... like think about it like at this point I'm, I'm, I literally was in Breck with the snowboard team at Alpha America. Like, life is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, I'm out here. Oh, this at a, is when they presented it. Yeah, they presented okay. it to me then mm -hmm. in 99. Like, I was watching X Games from afar. I think I went to Rhode Island in 96 just to check it out mm -hmm. um, with my buddy Tim Swart. Um, is that the first one? The second one. Oh, the second one. So, okay. the second one. And so, yeah, this is, this is, you know, now it's established. They've dropped the extreme. <laughs> That was the first, <gasps> yeah. first good move, right? Extreme games, uh, and I think sky surfing might be out now <laughs> as well. And they're they're starting to narrow it down. I think super modified shuffle racing might have still been there. I'm not sure, but hey, you know they were throwing things at and seeing what worked. But I think they they came to this conclusion: we got to get credible voices. Sure. And so this guy had come to me, and I was like, no. I came back home boasting to everybody out in America like yo this dude from X Games came at me I told him absolutely not and Ollie was like what? You had to take that you did what? And it now it was a meeting of the whole crew explaining to me why <laughs> you can make a difference yes. in the whole yo that could be your whole shit and you know how it is when folks can see things in you that you can't see of in yourself course. and I was like what do you mean be my whole what are you talking about? You're taking that job. I was like, well, I already said no. Two days later, Call dude calls. Him. Ooh, he followed up. He, he did a chat. There you go. You still stuck on stupid? Damn. <laughs> 
that was a that was damn he could bro. not These have called are like meant to be bro not even to cut you no, off no please when you're in the, in the in those moments and you're just like this is really happening he hit me back just like the the time before just like he but hit me he hit me up he again. could have He's, not even hit you back yeah I was just calling to see if maybe you changed your mind. But it, was it? It might have led him to it because you told him what was wrong with it. Right? I think he that respected. Was a big impression for I sure. think yeah. he. I think he respected the the fact that this kid is <laughs> stupid enough <laughs> and also like passionate enough. Like I, I was like, yo, this is this culture means everything to me. I don't want to be a part of something that is going to reduce it just so that people can make money. Like at the time think about all the horrible skate ads we would see and like oh, yeah. extreme this and this and that and you're just like oh why and we're not participating in it like maybe more kids are getting interested and, and brands are doing better but like you just can't stomach it being portrayed this way yeah. right so i went in and i was a sideline reporter for snowboarding um for at, at crested butte colorado and suddenly all the riders were like yo sal da, 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 da. And they had never, they'd never gotten that out of those folks, out of out of the athletes before. You're literally like the perfect person for that. Obviously, even leading up to just you being in the industry for so long, and then like you're you're such a people person, bro. It's just mm. like everybody resonates towards that energy. You know what I mean? And I think that's a big part of it because I don't I don't think just anybody could be doing what you've done. Looking back, plus they had, plus they had like broadcast. Yeah. They had other people in there that weren't they were us. squares. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 and so I had to learn how to. I had to learn how to work with them. They saw, okay, this kid's got, he, he clearly knows the landscape. He's passionate. He's not a pro. He's, he's rough around the edges, but we can work with him. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that X Games, the, uh, one of the a producer walked up to me. I swear to you, he's like, you know anything about skateboarding? I was like, yeah. Was like, can you be in Virginia in two weeks? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> and that's how that's it how began. It is. Wow. And it dude. just. Put on, put on, put on. Next thing you know, I'm standing on the goddamn vert ramp as Tony Hawk is spinning a 900. <laughs> and I slide down slide down the deck to cheer with everybody. And I'm sticking the microphone in this dude I was sending shoes to last year's face <laughs> in the biggest moment in the history of skateboarding. And then that next year, I get the call from Tony like, do you want to come on tour? I said, what? Yeah, we're good. we're doing the Tony Hawk tour, and it's gonna be this like rock tour. We're gonna bus, and we want you to be the an announcer. We want you to be a character wow. in the show. And I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> so cool. And so obviously that shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> really quick though, really quick. I know. Listen, Tony Hawk's nine hundred. Oh my it, god, it, we've seen it. I we a lot of people. It. We weren't there. No, but. You could feel the energy coming through the screen. Listen to me. Please. When I am old and on the in the rocking chair at whatever home they decide to put me in, and they're like, he's just standing off smiling. <laughs> Knitted blanket. Like over all you. that. I will be replaying that night in my head. That's how vivid and it, how that's one it will never diminish from my memory. Like all the way down to the fact that it was a balmy night in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> like on the, when, when, how many times have you experienced a balmy <laughs> night? We're going to play this right now, San Francisco. but we don't know if we could actually put this in the final edit because of X Games uh, yeah, rights and I'll everything, call. but we'll, we'll. I'll make a call. Okay. But oh. that was the moment that changed literally our whole worlds. Yeah. Like everything changed well i mean let's paint the picture here too it was the best trick contest mm. time colin mckay had won the best trick absolutely had this was after time and they were letting tony run and and extending the broadcast now here's where the intersection of all the the, the things that make this moment special it's friday night in america espn is prime I was just going to show you if you went back. Yeah. In the which that one? wide shot. Yep. Uh, right here. Yeah, in the corner you see there's a yellow T-shirt above the X. Uh huh. Yeah, that's me. That's oh. okay. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Just for history's sake. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's where I was. That's that's where I was. And Ooh. and um. It's it's Friday night prime time ESPN. 
you know, you got to think about like in those days, what are you doing tonight? Come over and watch ESPN. And then we're going to go out to the club, go to the bar. And folks came over and you're watching the game or what? Like that was yeah. an event. Yeah. Like we got beers. We got da, 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 da. That was the pregame to going out. And in every bar in America, ESPN was on. And it's Friday night prime time. So everybody's outside and around some sort of a television. Traditionally, ESPN extends broadcasts for a game yeah. that has gone extra innings, oh, extra yeah. innings yeah. right? Overtime, yeah. Overtime. Never in the <laughs> history have they. It's Sports Center is what they're cutting into. Huge show. The, yeah, the show, right? The <laughs> show. The like this is. This is how we eat. And they're like, we're a guy named Jamie Reynolds was like, tell him we're not. We're not we're not fucking leaving. <laughs> <laughs> we're extending this. <laughs> we're extending this. Some and 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 then he got and like the behind the scenes, you know, phone calls of probably dudes who were cursing each other out in Bristol, Connecticut and San Francisco, and San Francisco winning. The, the debate and then that happening mm -hmm. and people are watching right and like if you're at a bar someone's like hey this guy is this, hey you see this hey and someone's like hey turn the volume up on that <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. all right and so now the volume's on in the bar and now everyone is like locked in Kidding being in. like hey is this guy gonna make it's tony hawk right okay all right. Oh, 17 tries. Mm. That was it. He landed on 17 the 17 tries. 17th try. Wow. Oh, goodness. Man. So think about folks at home and like the pass along. Like, you got to see. Hey, are you watching ESPN right now? Tony Hawk's trying to make a 900. He's getting close. Go to it. Yeah. Like, I can't. There's, yeah. It's not going to be on fucking Insta Instagram. Yeah. And so that's how. And it's Friday night. And did he have any idea? Did he have any idea that this was going on in the back end? Did Tony? Tony? No. Yeah, he's just like trying he's to. Just, he's just. Yeah. Yeah. It's a contest for Tony. It's a contest, and yeah. it's also like he's been wrestling with this thing privately at this yeah. point for like eight years. A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of people were. Yes. Also, mm -hmm. a lot Danny, of people were trying to do this. Danny was. Uh, Tuss. Tuss Pappas. Tuss was. Yeah. Tuss yeah. Pappas was as well. Like it was a. It was, it was a, a race. whole thing. It was a race. Yeah. It was it was a space. It, really it was, was a space and race. Tony Stay Hawk up. had the main stage for this, and it happened not at some ramp. It happened on live, live. on live TV with five thousand people that were willing it to happen. Yes, the energy was so there. Oh my god! I mean, it was insane. Did you yeah, look at Bucky giving? Look at that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is I thought he had flies around him. I thought they were trying to swat the flies away. No, no, listen, didn't come, they were, you know, I, 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 just, <laughs> yeah. did they, did you, do we even know how many people were watching that broadcast? Did Mi it ever came, come out? I, I don't remember uh, the, the numbers, the numbers but okay. it was millions. I would assume, yeah. And then you got to think about the fact that like, what did SportsCenter lead with when this was over? History has just been yes. made. Oh, Tony Hawk, you've known him since you were young. The Birdman, 900. Right. And then, pshing, 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 Letterman, you name yeah. it, international. This was the fucking trick heard around the world. Also, his video game was on the cusp of coming out. Yeah. Which he's low-key, low-key been testing that no one even knows about. Yep. Right. So and that was probably on the back of his mind too, like just all of this shit coming like full front, like damn. And hey. here's the, my favorite part about this: going to be a secret trick. Tony could have said like, "All right, sweet, I'm going to go and just like bags, 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 and more bags." He said, "Hold on, hold on, open the door and be like, hey, everybody, let's go, everybody, skateboarding." Yeah. Anything. Ev, 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 let's go. I'm yeah. taking everybody with me. There's nobody else like that, dude. That's why I love Tony Hawk yeah. is because he is so he's done a lot of stuff for us here. We've had this. We had a little game show thing back there where he came and played his own game. Like he does things just because you're a skateboarder. 
and he wants to help and he's reaching you know he's taking the time out of his day yeah. he's he's an ambassador Straight like up, the yeah. definition of not even an ambassador he is the yeah. ambassador yeah and he has single-handedly helped to make skateboarding remain relevant to the world He's the godfather and, Don of this shit. And Real respected. Like, Straight dude, up. All the parents when I was a kid, they were like, oh, you skate? What is that? Right. And then you see the dude on. Oh, has, Tony Hawk does it? Yeah. We love him. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are just like, <laughs> my mom. <laughs> she's just yeah. like, Tony Hawk, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 this, this is the truth. It's, it's, the, truth. The, truth. it's, the, it's truth. the truth. It's the truth. I can't even imagine anybody else in that position, but I think we have the best guy in that position. By oh, hell yeah. Hands and there's no down. there's no other ambassador of any sport <laughs> who is able to transcend generations. Mm. Bro, at X Games this year, this dude shows up, he's you know, co hosting with Jason Ellis and I, mm -hmm. and he comes to set. And it was, it's like Jesus walked in. Jesus, <laughs> Harry Styles, <laughs> and Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, all <laughs> fused into one. Like young girls, like clearly in their teens and early 20s, they're like, Ta -da! And I, I, just, I remember one time just looking at him, like, being, bro, and he's like, he literally just. <laughs> And he's down there, like taking pictures, and they're like, girls are like, "Oh my god!" Like, I look like like a photo, and you're like, "Oh my god, this dude is." He's so humble. He's, he's so super humble, bro. so humble, and I think it's this. There's just this permanent childlike enthusiasm that it, he's. There's just no amount of jaded. Mm -hmm. Hearing Tony talk about skateboarding today is the same way that he's talked about it every day. Right. His passion, his excitement for what's who's doing what now today is just like it was 40 years ago. And it's funny, too, because, like, I mean, this is his story to tell. We're just talking about Tony, but he was the underdog. He was the guy that, you know, nobody liked. And he was, you know, going up against Christian Asoy, the cool guy. And, you know, what I mean, like, there's he, such he a. He was hated in his high school. He was. <laughs> That's what I heard, for sure. Now look at him. You yeah, know, he's like, it's like ah, I'm, people are like, I went to school with you, bro. And he's like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. You probably talk shit. Yeah. You probably talk shit. Probably talk shit. Fuck you. Talk shit. <laughs> but yeah, the when he called me to, to personally invite me on the, on the Hawk Tour and then to be able to do that yeah. for three years was... I'm were, so glad there was no social media then. Were you, <laughs> were, you going, were you going back and forth from the tour to X Games, or was it, it was it seasonal? So we did the tour for about three and a half, four weeks straight, um, and then we would go into X Games from like maybe two weeks later. You just mentioned too, like you just were doing the X Games again with uh, Jason Ellison, Tony Hawk. Yeah, first time in ten years. You were with X Games for what thirteen years? Yeah. Why did you leave? What happened there? Because you came back, and now it's like this reunion. And how do you feel about X Games now, since you've been gone for so long? Since you've been gone. <laughs> um, I left because I could see the handwriting on the wall that... How do I say this? Fuck it. Personally, in my opinion, I could see that Disney no longer... X Games wasn't Im important the way it had mm. been. And it was starting to show in the manners in which like, oh, wait, we don't have that camera anymore? Wait, what happened to that angle? Okay, we do more for less. Do more for less. Do more for less is what it was starting to become. And the quality of courses and the manner in which I th the the culture was being portrayed like we used to have all sorts of programming during the year that lead led up to x games and like telling stories telling stories and i was doing all that and they were just like wah, 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 cutting that that's and, huge though for the that outside was, world to know for, about yeah, these people yeah. you wouldn't do that in any other sports so wait we're just going to show up every six months then they came up with the global x games and that's when i was like hey guys look I know that someone in advertising is thrilled about this, 
but no one is going to care. Who is going to care about a, a, a contest that's taking place in Brazil at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday that there's no reason for? There's no championship. So these are just four individual X Games and now, like, what does that do to summer X Games? They're like one-off exhibitions almost. Yeah, these exhibitions, right. like, mm. w- w- they, someone give me a why, and no one could give me a why. And to me, I was like, well, this is going to fail. And when it does, if they're tightening the purse strings now, well, when this shit is over and they then they their P&L comes through, like, they're going to go on a slash and burn tour. Wow, okay. That was your feeling about it. That was my it, feeling. Okay. And I just was like... I, at, at that point too, like thinking about like where I came from and how I started in the industry, I kind of just had felt like I want to get back to being closer to the individual sports and just being more ab- ab- about the things that are happening within the culture during the year and events, as opposed to like this thing that has kind of become a a. a for lack of a better word, like a, a circus. Like it just became so, so massive. And then when it no longer was working out for them from a bottom line, it was just like, ch, ch, ch. Cutting, cutting corners. And so I was like, I, I, I think I got to go. Wow. And there was a number that they could have given me, what I like to call amnesia money. <laughs> Make me forget. Make Can me you forget. pay me enough to forget about the things that like aren't sitting well mm. with me? And Did you tell him that number? Yes, very much so. And also quietly I was negotiating with Red Bull um, because I saw all the things that Red Bull was doing and the events were dope and they're like, an athlete's coming up with a thing and I'm like, yeah, that looks dope. So I called them. I had a homie who worked there that I knew mm-hmm. and I was like, yo, y'all are doing all this really, really cool stuff, but do you need a would you be da- think you need a me? And he was like, are you serious? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was just kind of, this was just like a smell check. He's like, are you serious? Because if you're for real, like I'm, this is becomes my priority. So we're quietly like, I, I remember calling my agent at CAA and being like, hey, so look, here's the plan. He's like, what? No, TV. Like you've got to be on TV. Like it's X Games, it's the worldwide leader in sports. Excuse me, wasn't the red wasn't the Red Bull stuff going to be on TV? NBC. The the like New Year's stuff they would do on ESPN, but all their other stuff at that point was like on different networks, online and online. Okay, and okay. they were killing it. And I was like, Do you want to do a series that we put on TV, like with a bunch of these events and make like essentially like an ABC's Wide World of Sports, but of like shred culture you're pitching that to them yeah Mm. and they were like yeah actually there's a thing that we've been talking about doing the red bull signature series i'm like yo let's get down so we're talking 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 and i i think espn thought well like he's not going to nbc he's not going cbs isn't going to take him so he's going to have to say yes and they came back to me with a number that was like way below the amnesia number wasn't the amnesia number and for me at that point like 13 years I'm like, no, I'm the quarterback of this. And if y'all don't think I'm the quarterback of this, Mm. that's fine. But I'm the quarterback of the X Games. And you at a certain point where you just got to stand up and like know that that's what you you are. And that's what it is to the point where you're like, you're willing to walk. And someone from their business affairs told my my lawyer on a call, well, he's not the face of the X Games, so we're not going to pay him like it. I remember my lawyer calling me and wow. telling me that. Ooh. I was like, what was that? Oh, word, Darren, we're out. He's Who? like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, no, we're out, Darren. That one-liner. We're Who out. Who did they yeah. think was the face of this? I was like, bro, we we are out. <laughs> like, call Red Bull. And, you know, when you work, at that point, I've been represented by, by CAA, and, and I'm in, like, this the town of television. Mm-hmm. This is a big risk in their eyes that you're going to leave television um, to go and just work for a brand. But I wanted to get back to like being in dope shit. And Red Bull was doing the dope shit. And sure enough, Red Bull was like, we'll pay you to remember (laughs) (laughs) and give you some wings. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) that's what they do, right? This is They're good at doing it, man. Big up to play Red Bull. And this is like 2012-ish. Yeah, this is 2012. 
And it was a, it's bittersweet, man. It was super bittersweet. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you recognize that because yeah. as much as like I was like, you know, you're in, you're in that moment where you're 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 pounding your chest. There's also like, yo, I was a sideline reporter for the for the Western Conference of the NBA on ESPN and ABC. Yes, because of what I learned and read, ESPN put me through school. Mm-hmm. I would go to seminar after seminar and seminar and learned how to be the best of the best right. wow. and i would be alongside the best basketball broadcasters hockey baseball you name it um and and get to be side by side with them in in this unlimited schooling that you could get at ESPN. so i signed up for all the shit wow that's amazing what's like, like the favorite broadcaster that you've met <sighs> chick hearn i never met chick oh. hearn man but i i i think you know st- i stuart always inspired me stuart scott okay yeah yeah yeah. wow when i I used to watch him and the fact that he had the freedom to like speak with swag and make sure that he was talking to us to like brown people on on sports center i was like yo and make hip-hop references and talk about biggie and (laughs) like and like like literally spit bars from rap songs, you're like, what? <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> He's of us. Yeah. That was a really big deal. And so when I finally got to meet him and he was cool, um, that was pretty amazing. Also, too, like, you know, I'm working in the NBA, like, I, I got to work with, with a, a, a legendary broadcaster named Brent Musburger. Mm-hmm. Brent Musburger was like the voice of college football. You know, this dude is like, he was the guy and iconic voice and he took me under his wing Sick. wow hey oh, young fella he called me young fella how about we meet for a beer over, uh, after the game and talk a little bit about the the ups and the downs and yeah <laughs> and he would work with me That's wow. so tight. and meanwhile like tell me the ponies that i needed to bet on this okay. weekend <laughs> okay. you know, like he was yo he was he was he was amazing so i'd say yeah those were those were the two most uh Chris Fowler was also dope. Mm. Chris Fowler was a, a real mentor. He was the host of the X Games when I came on. And he was the first, per- him and Susie Colber were the first people to take me aside and be like, this is going to be yours. If you take this serious, because mind you, when I first got to the X Games, yo, you're sending it with the homies. Right. You're, gonna, and you're showing up late and all the things. And they're like, hey, asshole, <laughs> out of all your friends here, this can be yours. And it was. Yeah. Take this seriously. What was you? What would you do on? Except for like when the X Games was going on, what would you do when it was off? Like, were you doing other working on other things or just yeah. working with them? Like back then, there was all different types of qualifier events. There was the B threes. There, were, I had a show called X Today. I had a, like a music and culture show called X in Concert. And then there were other other events like Vans Triple Crowns and things like that. I was getting calls to do. I was doing, started doing announcing, excuse me, for the ASP uh, world tour of surfing. Um, I was working my ass off. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're always on the I was always. And then in 2006, (laughs) in some weird ass flash, uh, E! Entertainment calls. And my agent calls me. I was in Hawaii at doing this MTV, Kelly Slater's celebrity surf whatever thing you know I love like that. life he's is a, <laughs> he's so many different things happening. I love it. like yeah. and i'm literally and and he's going out kelly's dating um what was the girl the woman that that tom brady married uh giselle, giselle. Yeah. he's like giselle and so it's it's giselle and all of her like brazilian supermodel friends <laughs> and it was insane like you're having the, you're having the week of your life sure and my agent calls like hey uh, so remember you did an audition at E last year? It was called a general where they just like farm you out to mm. different networks and you read tape and, oh, maybe we like him or no. They have a show called The Daily Ten yeah. and they can't find a host for it. And someone dug up your tape and they want to see you. And I remember saying to my agent on the phone, like, The Daily Ten, that sounds like every day. And he's like, yeah, it is. It's the, called The Daily Ten. It's like... Do they ever go on hiatus? <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I'm in Hawaii with Giselle and company, Alessandra Ambrosio, 
<laughs> and you're talking to me about coming in into a, a job, studio, a job. studio job to talk about gossip. Also, like, where's my street cred going to go if I do this show? It was a thing that came yeah, into my uh, head. For sure. But you did it. I came back <laughs> and my my they, they had a whole come to Jesus with me, agent, manager, the whole thing. Like, because you got to think about it. Like, I'm thinking strictly shred lifestyle mentality like yes i'm down for being on tv but like don't infringe on the lifestyle like all the way back to the guy who was happily bussing tables and mm-hmm. doing all these other things because because of his hobbies it was good for the lifestyle yeah and now you're in this like weird warp zone version of what that is and anyway um did they have hiatuses is that no could you work a- no I, then why did you take day. the job then I took the job because... What year was this? So, this so we is 2006. Kind of, okay. 2006. Because my star ascended so quickly at ESPN and at X Games. I went from making like average money to like, I'm making money. Mm-hmm. And no one had educated me about how to deal with taxes. Oh. Mm. Wow. And blood, s- yeah. so up until that point, yeah, no one had really like given me an education. So I was like, kind of paying taxes, but like, mm. I'm like, oh, I'm about to sign a really big deal. Like, I'm good. I'll pay whatever it is. Well, they come a knocking. I remember when the envelope came in the mail, oh, like official IRS. He's been like, served. I was like, huh? <laughs> shit. And I opened that shit up, bro, and my whole body just went cold. I was like, oh my God, state and California. And I looked at the number and I got like, called my my, my manager and, and she was like, we gotta get you a, a, a business manager. I didn't even have a, I didn't even know what a business manager was. I was just like you enjoying just going, life. like and putting the checks in. Yeah, and like, like, oh, don't worry, y'all, y'all, I got it. I was, <laughs> go to sushi, was, we'll eat good dude, tonight. Like, we're yeah. good, we should go to Vegas. Oh, you can't, don't we worry, you. we got you, let's yeah. go. Let's get on the plane. I wasn't, I wasn't the swagger dude. I was like, we're all eating. We're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> we all know the, yeah. that. Yeah. I'm not the first person it happened to. And I owed a lot of money. Okay. In taxes. So this was a money move. Like, hey, I got to pay all this stuff back. Here's a, here's a yeah. really good gig. Mind you, also what has just happened is I was supposed to sign a seven-figure a, a seven deal mm. at ESPN. Um after that first year at the NBA, that was gonna, NBA, X Games, etc. Like, yo, it's about to be on. And I find out after the playoffs that I'm not coming back to the NBA. Wow. Because the NBA said to ESPN, like, this dude, X Games, dreadlock guy, doesn't wear suits. Nah, we're not into this. Hmm. And I literally found out when they started broadcasting preseason games and I hadn't been called to get on a team. Wow. So what and and at the same time the 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 guy who had just come in as president also started to clip all of that shoulder programming stuff during the year. The X todays and X and concerts and all that. He's like, we're doing X games in the winter, X games in the summer, one preview show here, one preview show there. <sighs> My yeah. deal went down to I went from making six figures to they whittled me down to to high, a high five figure deal. Wow! And you got to figure agent, manager, For taxes, sure etc. Little yeah. cuts, and you're just like, oh, that's whoa, right what's there. what? Whoa, whoa, yo, what just happened? <laughs> it was all good just a week ago. <laughs> Daily ten, <laughs> sign me up. Here we and go. And so you know now the IRS has just hit, and you, mm. you fuck your pride and your lifestyle. Yeah, right. And so back I was against the wall, right there. Back was against the wall, and so I took it, and it was the best thing I ever could have done. Well, one of the reasons why it was a good thing was you 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 literally broke the uh, the Kim Kardashian sex tape. I did. Oh my god! <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a perfect timing, man! <laughs> I did. She was on your show, and, yeah. and 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 she was denying this sex tape even existed, and then yeah. on your show. She yeah. said, "Yes, it exists." So what had hap- what had happened was, <laughs> <laughs> I used to see her out in the clubs. Okay. Now you remember when we were we were heavy in the streets. Yeah. 
I mean, I wasn't out there as much, but I was there. You were outside. I was definitely outside. You, you were out. lost Palmer. Quiet, yeah, okay. He quietly. was quietly yeah. in the corner, but he was outside. This this fool was laying low in the cut and rocking shoulder. I call the shoulder snatch him ups, where he'd just be that quiet dude, and girls would walk by just a little too close enough, and you're like, huh. Give him like that light little tie and like, where'd he go? Gone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, don't let, don't let this dude, f- he was outside, but he was. I was outside. <laughs> I, admit, I admit that. He was outside. So uh, <laughs> it was in those days where when we were outside, That's- you're, we're, oh, there's Leo at the table, DiCaprio, right? DiCaprio, yeah, there's yeah. this one, there's that one, there's uh, Mark. Just mingling, uh, going and, on. and but it's all like eye level skaters and 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 rappers and singers and the shit was crazy. Now skaters had the key to the city. At we that had time. the key. Real yeah, tough. Chad Muska, Paris Hilton, literally, mm-hmm. like, and we had the ability. Our crew could get in to to the whatever it was like mad famous people and then like skate adjacent street culture like. It was crazy. Yeah, oh my gosh, bro. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And so we would see her out. She'd be out. I didn't really know her like that, but I would see her. But apparently what happened was they really liked the show and they liked me. And what I brought to the Daily Ten was like, you know, I'm not going to be some Ryan Seacrest. Right. So I got to figure out a way to make this kind of tongue in cheek. I would watch Jon Stewart on The Daily Show and I'm like, I'm going to try and do my best version of like a dude that comes from my world John stewarding like the absurdity that we're even having this conversation <laughs> and hopefully like not just get run out of our culture like i was terrified mm. like anxiety and then next thing you know homies are like yo i watched that shit with my girl bro like, thank you <laughs> yeah. i can't watch any of that other shit but you mad funny you're like yeah that's the okay. type of shit that you okay. like admit to after the fact but you, you find out the homies up like, bro i watched that shit yeah <laughs> you're like, oh yeah go, 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 thank you yeah I'm, you know and and that's what was happening like i became the 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 i became the legal key for dudes to sit on the couch and have to suffer through <laughs> right all the gossip all this stuff that like their girl needs and he's mad funny and like he, and then they're like yeah well that's my oh you don't know him he's from x games right that's my guy and he represents us. And so it it became culturally it was cool. I did stuff with, with P Rod and Costin and had and I made sure that whenever I could get the homies on the show, I did and it was dope. So Ted Ted Harbert, who was the president of the of of, of the network, comes downstairs one day, walks into my producer's office, and then my producer, my, I just hear my producer yell, Sal, get in here. And I'm like, oh fuck. What did I do? Uh, do I have to wear my my dreads down today or in a ponytail? Like literally, that was a conversation that wow. I went wow. went through. At e. It was crazy. It looks too ghetto. I don't know if this yeah. is appropriate. Bro, the first day when we were when we <laughs> when we were screen testing, this fool came downstairs, Ted Harvard, and at one point walks on set mid rehearsal and puts his hands in my hair. Wow. <laughs> I just wanted to see what it would look like. Wow. This is, these are so interesting. My producer comes running, like sprinting out of control room, like because he knows I'm about to end. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Are you really hey, hey yeah. Ted, how are you? Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Pulls him away. Saved yeah. his life. Wow. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, Ted was he was he was a very interesting executive. But anyway, turns out that they're making a deal for this show, for the Kardashian show, behind the scenes, and. They've convinced, um, they've they've convinced uh, Kim to come on. They, Kim says that if we're gonna do it, we're doing it on the Daily Ten, and I want to do it with Sal. Wow! <laughs> and I'm like, at the time, she's denying. Yes, this exists. Interview after interview, interview after yeah, interview. Yeah. So I come in, closed door meeting. The president and my producer. Hey, so we're gonna do this thing. Kim Kardashian's gonna come in. She's going to admit for the first time the exclusive that the sex tape does exist and you're doing the interview because the family has requested you. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Do you think you can handle that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Handshake, handshake. It's a big deal for a network, for the network. Everyone's going to be counting on you. I'm like, okay. 
I go back out, get in my cubicle. I'm just like, whoa, what is even happening? And I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. Next day, I'm in there. I used to sit and write. So you, you had like a, a system and you're looking at the stories and I'm writing my stories and like trying to make right jokes, etc. And I tap, tap, tap. I always have my headphones on. I'm listening to hip hop, like just locked in. Turn around. There's Kim. There's her mom. There's Ted Harbour, the president. And there's my producer. Take my headphones off. Hi, how y'all? How you doing? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Sal. So this is Kim. Kim, this is Sal. Hi. She's like super shy. Um, we're excited to have Kim on the show today. We wanted you guys to get to know each other. The mom is like making small talk. Da, da, da. Oh, we love you. We watch the show. All the girls love you. And da, da, da. I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, so we're going to leave you just two together to, to, to get to know each other. They pull out a chair from another cubicle, pull it up into my cubicle, sit Kim down, and then everyone breaks out. <laughs> get comfortable. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, weird. Weird. Yeah, how do you start that conversation? Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's a sex tape, and we're going to reveal it. So I'm just like, yeah, so um, I think we have some mutual friends and blah, 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 trying to like, Small talk trying to make her feel yeah, like as cool as possible. And, and then finally talking about her like, closet upgrade thing that she does at the time that's what she that's yeah, what that's she was known job. for yeah. she would go in and flip these girls co um closets make them mad money and was taking she was a hustler yeah. um and she was sweet like she was really sweet and then finally i'm like so this is weird <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to start it <laughs> she yeah. laughs she's like yeah i'm like look i'm gonna make this as fun as possible we're gonna talk about all the other things that you're up to etc etc we'll play like a little game like whatever like uh question game and then you know we'll get to the thing and you just tell me what you're going to be comfortable with wait this is did you by chance had you had seen no. the video at this point no <laughs> no i had not i hadn't did there she was, have a copy with her yeah. she was, Huh. Valid, valid. Joke. Let's get you up to let's get you up to speed. Yeah. What's going on? Like you got to remember. I can pull it up. We're <laughs> don't pull it up. Ash. We're good. We're still in the we're still in the does it or doesn't it exist phase? Yeah. Ray J's out here. Talking. Ray Ray J mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's this is a this, this is a big national conversation <laughs> that is taking place. The thing is, though, they all knew. And the thing is, like, the perfect scenario to present it right before their show's about to come out Bro, with E. I can neither confirm or deny that, but yes. <laughs> and so. Writing's on the wall. The writing. The, clearly, it's like, not a coincidence. what I'm describing right. to you was, like, this is a setup yeah. for something bigger. much bigger yeah. that takes place today as we speak on Hulu. Mm. Um and so I'm, I'm like, okay, and you know, we'll, 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 we'll make it cool and we'll have fun. And here's how I'm going to ask you about that. And she's like, okay, that feels good. And then cool. Mom comes and gets her. Okay, we'll see you. They go down to hair, hair and makeup. I remember like being in hair and makeup and now the stylist. By the way, my stylist on the show was Monica Rose. Wow. Oh, wow. Yes. That's Sal's Sal, Sal, wife. Sal, Sal, Salvador Lucas Barbier's <laughs> wife yes. was my stylist. And so, you know. She's like, okay, we're going to get you right, Papa. We're going to get you right <laughs> uh, for this. And then, yeah, we did it. You know, we, we had fun. I kept it light. Everyone, the, the whole behind the cameras is like all the executives and brass of the network. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not really familiar with it. Was this show live or was it pre-recorded? This was a show that was live. It's called Live, live to Tape. So okay. we shoot it as mm -hmm. if live. And then as soon as we're done, it literally goes goes to goes, goes live. live. Okay. Sometimes so you if, could maybe if something went wrong redo something really quickly. But the way our our windows were, Small. if we didn't, if we fucked up enough times, then we would have to do a certain portion of the show live. Oh, I see. Because okay. we're against the broadcast. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. So if okay. shit's going wrong, it's like, all right, we're live. Oh, fuck. Okay. We're live. <laughs> and, you know, it seems like that. you have maybe like a 10, 20 minute buffer. Yes. Between that. E exactly. Okay. And as soon it, it goes live, okay. and then the next day I come into work, and there is a giant basket at my desk. Oh, you just like broke numbers. What was in it? Money? Like, 
I know. A basket of money. It's a, ba- it's a wine, money basket. Wine, champagne, chocolates, like you name it. Like the craziest gift basket you've ever fucking seen. Like what is this? Open the card. I'm assuming it's from the president. Good job. Da, 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 da. From Kim. It's from Chris and Kim Kardashian. Thank you so much for being so kind. And da, 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 da. you're a friend of the family now. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. And then, like, go on to the blogs and everything. Exclusive. Sal Masekela gets oh. the exclusive. And now, like, suddenly I'm walking down the street and paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> like what is happening and then you know then i'm getting in, like phone calls like hey we just wanted to invite you out to the house for we're doing this christmas dinner we love you to come and next thing you know like i'm at the kardashians house for like christmas dinners and we're hanging out and the whole like this is repeated years like or just, yeah like yeah. For, <laughs> i was year. i was in the circle for I was in the circle of trust with that family for a good two years, wow. three years. Yeah. Amazing. Do you still keep up with them? Or? No, no, not at all. <gasps> it's funny that you used keep, keep up, up. Yeah. with them. <laughs> with the Kardashians. With them. Yeah. Do you still keep up with the Kardashians? <laughs> um, I ran into Kris Jenner in Sicily last year. And of course, I had dreadlocks when she'd last seen me. And she didn't recognize me. She was at the table next door next at uh, this event. And... Um, then I was like, my name's Salema, but I used to go by Sal. I had dreadlocks. Bro, her face just went. It's <gasps> <laughs> like, oh my God, yes. How are you? I'm great. I'm like, how are you though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Things I have mean, changed quite wow. a bit since. Yeah. I mean. That's crazy. It was, I mean, literally wow. th- then Bruce would call to invite me and my friend Ben He'd leave me voice messages to mm. come play golf in Calabasas. Wow. So we'd go out and golf with him. Like, it was a whole... Crazy, It was bro. a whole world, man. That's insane. I mean, everybody was trying to get that out of them, that this tape was around and yeah. it existed. And, and they said here it, you are. They said it was specifically something about me on the show that they just knew that I would be the one to to make it work and it's on their own network too and then literally two weeks later two weeks later they're announcing the promos for keeping up with the kardashians begin oh Oh, literally like oh they are smart (laughs) announcing it on e like come on bro they are a ryan seacrest production and it was just like they're smart and now i'm talking about them on the nine club on the nine club Yeah, it's crazy. That's, I mean, yeah, you couldn't even the, your yeah, story something like that. Just in the last like hour we've been here is incredibly <laughs> <laughs> like sorry, you have just waiting tables and you're just there. It's like, ins- <laughs> no, it's insane, man. It's let me it's- ask you one question in the sense of like, so your parents obviously, you know, they didn't know what was going to be based on your journey, right? But now at this point, how are they like, you know. Uh, looking at you know what's going on now at oh. this point at the yeah, kardashian just, point yeah, yeah. Or, well, i mean you could we could go along you know a little you know three years before that just to yeah kind of like you know I, 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 I tell you a funny story so my, my father passed in 2018 um but as i as you know when you know when alpha america happened here's a funny story costin and folks were on tour somewhere in finland my father was playing a, a show in like Helsinki. They're on a ferry. My dad's wearing an alphanumeric sweatshirt. Mm. <laughs> and Kostin walks up to, he's trying to comprehend how this like older black man is like in this dope alphanumeric. Like, how do you, how'd you get that? And my dad proudly is like, it's my son's company. You know him. I think they call him Sal. His name is Salema, but they call him Sal. <laughs> and next thing you know, like, my dad calls me. He's like, I just met a bunch of your friends, man, skateboarders on the boat, man. They were so stoked on my sweatshirt. Your thing's a real thing, man. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 it had to take a Come boat in Helsinki yeah. <laughs> for him to 
Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's and amazing. I remember like seeing Costin and he was just so like, he's like, dude, we met your dad. Um, but he is a great oh. story. My father was finally in town during the X Games mm-hmm. and I invited him to come. And he'd never seen any of this stuff before. So I'm really excited that he's there. It's in the Staples Center. For, remember, like, mm-hmm. that shit was like Huge the ticket. Right there, yeah. 18, it was sold out. Vert inside the Staples Center was like a championship basketball game. Pops gets a front row seat in that friends and family row mm-hmm. against uh, 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 the Vert Ram. I remember, like, seeing him, sometimes camera shots of him, and he's just wide-eyed. I'm commentating the contest with, uh, with Tony and, and Chris Miller. Events over, hang out with my dad afterwards, and he comes up to me and he's just so fucking excited. He's like, "Man, why didn't you fucking tell me?" Man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Tell you what? Why didn't you tell me, man, that these guys are musicians? This wow. is jazz, man. It's like skateboarding is jazz." Wow. And he begins to explain to me how. You know, one guy is standing on the vert ramp and then and he drops in and he does a trick and you see all the other guys are watching him and they're in a rhythm with him and then the next person, he jumps in and now he's doing like extensions, like a, like a, like a freestyle, like a solo, playing solos, in the, but in the same song. It's jazz, man. Mm-hmm. Skateboarding is fucking jazz. They're all connected. Wow. Like the same way that we're connected on stage. I love that. Damn. Bro, I hugged him so hard. Like, <laughs> it was, he's like, and, and then he just says to me, he said, and you're the voice of this whole fucking yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. He's like, you're the conductor. It's amazing. Wow. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And that's just one of those moments where you're like, you, you can't dream of being seen by your parent that way, yeah. you know? He had never watched any of these? Or? No. Wow. No, he'd never seen it. Like, his world was music. Music, you know? yeah. Was music. So him and, I mean, my mom came to everything, you know, um, and was the biggest cheerleader, and they just couldn't believe what, you know, that that kid answering the phones at a magazine who was like, I think I'm on to something, um, that that's where it would take him yeah because you never know how these things will play out no oh but you already had that drive and passion and again you are like one of the nicest humans in the sense of like you just go up to everybody with the same energy you know what i mean and that that resonates with a lot of people man if you treat everybody the same on that that save wing wavelength that you're like you know I mean, I live by that motto. You treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like you are an impediment, like the impediment of that. Like I real talk. Like I, I mean, I, I really every time I see you, bro, it's like open, open hearted, like just always same. You know what I mean? Like even keel, and I, I really respect that. I, I appreciate it, Jerome, because like for me, it's like I just marvel at the fact that we are still able to show up to this thing, and it's always been that way for me for every stage of it. Like, I just, I sit real, real, real deep of the gift of how lucky we all have been mm. to be able to to make our livings, our families, our, our worlds revolve around the shit that, like, our, our eight-year-old self, like, yeah. dances in. Yeah. <laughs> like, people don't, don't become adults and get to, like, engage with their eight-year-old inner child if anything they're fucking beating that shit down and away to the point where like the idea of celebrating play is foreign to them it's literally something that existed in their past and so i've always you know my thing of being able to even be accepted you know skateboarding is tough you know for a long time you know folks when i first blew up at X Games and people outside of the industry didn't really know where I came from, there were a lot of folks who were salty. Mm -hmm. Like, Big Brother went on a whole, like, (laughs) tirade against me. Who is this guy? Yeah. Like, without them really knowing. Without them knowing. Mm -hmm. What was his name that used to, oh, man. Naraco? No, not Naraco. Naraco was the homie. Uh, Um, Pontius? Not Pontius. A writer? Yeah. 
Earl? No. Um, oh, uh, Earl. The, the dude that got talk shit to um, Ty. What's his name? Uh, uh, Pat Canale? Canale? I think maybe, maybe it was Canale. I can't think of his name, but it, I don't want to misquote. So I don't, I don't think it was Canale. But he used to write like... He, he at one point he wrote like a fucking just I I was I remember reading and I I mean I I had every issue of Big Brother there was and now you, I'm the subject of I'm getting torched hmm. and um, at a certain point he reached out to me to to, to do an interview mm. and we had the most beautiful conversation like. This was after the fact. After the fact. Oh, it wasn't at Big Brother then. It, he wasn't at he, Big he Brother. He was at Big Brother. Oh, okay. So Yeah, he okay. was, because I, word got out to him that like, yo, you, you broke this dude. And also like, I don't think you know who you yeah, who right, he is. Right, right. And we had a beautiful conversation. And then he ended up writing this like piece being like, I went into this thing wanting to <laughs> hate this dude. And... I get it. Like he actually is one of us, right? And that was like, <sighs> mm -hmm. because my whole—I don't think people realized that the reason that I had took the job wasn't that no one knew that I had said no. You know, no one knew that like my 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 homies fired me up enough to be like, you can make a difference for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's like just dope to be able to have those type of brothers in your corner oh, to pump you up like to that? pump okay. you up like that is okay. like is 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 crazy and so yeah man i guess i just really here i am about to celebrate my 52nd birthday and i'm just like pff, it's all bonus man like yeah. i i'm still here and it's it's amazing man and so i just i'm excited for for everyone that's gotten to live their dream and and be a part of this in whatever way yeah yeah. Definitely. yeah well you've definitely been there with us you yeah. know what i mean like I, mm -hmm. I i never was a big x games viewer you know i'm out there skating i'm out doing the yeah it's cool i'll catch one or I'm two you're breaking myself bro but you know <laughs> what i mean though yeah. it's like I, i'd catch one or two but i wasn't like oh my god x games is on i gotta watch this i was never that guy but i i knew who sal masakela was you know what i mean like i would tune in i'd hear the voice like i knew you know what i mean like so i didn't have to tune into everyone you know to yeah. get to know you like you were with us you know what i mean yeah thank you and i think i chose to make sure that i crafted my storytelling in mm -hmm. a way that like for all the people who do this you're seen and i'm i'm doing everything i can to honor this thing in a way that people who've never seen this before can walk away with a different impression of what skateboarding is that was yes. and that was the world that i had to learn how to straddle in the broadcast and that's the most important to me that's the most important thing is you know we watch it as skateboarders we know what the hell's going on people out there the the audience doesn't know anything about skateboarding and so you're there to teach them and to get to know who these guys are what what makes them tick what tricks they're doing this and that and whatever and you know fast forwarding it to the olympics that just came on and you know i'd spoken earlier about some broadcasting there and i'm just like they just totally just shit the bed right here. They didn't empower the their the people that they hired. They didn't do. They just stuck them probably in a booth and said talk. Yeah, yeah. And didn't give them any context of mm -mm. the importance of storytelling, the 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 elevation of what it means for this this sport that people get fucking arrested for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. And dude. seen as like local terrorists is in the goddamn olympics yeah and you're not giving us anything <laughs> not to work thing with to work and with that was the most no contextualization they didn't give him no seminars on the culture well this yeah. is yeah. <laughs> but Straight that up. was my whole Straight thing up. is like we have talented people in our industry yeah use them yeah and that's when you're getting into like decisions that are being made by big dogs yeah i've, I've, I've worked two olympics a, it ain't a check. Right. They really know the fact that, like, it's more valuable for you yeah. <laughs> than it is for them. Like, they're like, look, we'll get anybody. Unless you're like Johnny won an Olympics before, or Susie won an Olympics before, mm -hmm. or you're like a big, 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 big super talent, you're all disposable. So, do you want the shine that being associated with us can give you, or keep it moving? And also, like, we're not that 
for things that are fringe, it's just they 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 still see it as fringe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like even though skateboarding is in the Olympics, you would think that they'd be like, "All right, we should figure out a way to deep dive this culture a third as hard as we do gymnastics." And by the way, I'm not shitting on gymnastics, but by the time whoever it is gets up on the, the beam horse, or yeah. whatever, I I have a I got a horse in this race. Yeah. Because I understand the why and what yeah. it's taken for them to get there. And I think that our this culture is so rich mm -hmm. in the, the most beautiful thing about skateboarding is that like there's I don't think there's any other activity in the world in which no matter where you come from, you can do this thing and you can do it in use it as your own form of like cathartic self-expression to get through like coming of age. Mm -hmm. Like skateboarding, it, it, there's nothing else like it mm -hmm. in, in, in what that is and the bonds it builds and like a fuck what street you live on or where you're from or whatever. Like you get down, you get down, mm -hmm. all right, cool. We're doing this. And to see internationally like what skateboarding is becoming in like the deepest favelas of of brazil <laughs> and all of these areas now in the middle east and 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 africa where like i'll just be on i'll, I'll, I'll be on instagram whatever and i'm like what is happening uganda in, skateboard in society yeah like uganda like and ghana yeah. and like these kids who are out here like there's what's the one that i don't know what country is that little kid that pushes that gigantic <laughs> Organic double set and like clearly on some shitty ass equipment and like a whole village like going crazy and you're like oh my god it's it's replicating mm. like and i think olympics i i do think that's the power of something like the olympics yeah. even though it's not in the way that we want to see mm. it suddenly a country that was like literally like beating those kids off the street is like all right now you, we will, you now and we you skate. go build this go build the park and if it's not done by this time your whole family's going to jail. <laughs> we'll be in prison like yeah. that's literally like the yeah. switch that's being flipped in, in countries and the, the fact that it comes down to you know a piece of wood some yeah. urethane and some trucks and like the world the world the world is yours from a skateboard for sure mm -hmm. down. like if I wasn't pushing to and from school in Massachusetts during those times, like there's a bunch of things that would have occurred differently in my life without those fucking punk rock dudes being like, we fuck with you. Right. Yeah. You know, these little, it's, it's given me so, so much. And it's not even my primary thing, but the manner in which I've been able to touch and engage with it. And like, you can still catch me on a Wednesday night or a Sunday night at Stoner Park trying not to kill myself. But like, <laughs> but like I, I, I think I have more fun rolling around now in the totality of the mm -hmm. gift of how I got mm -hmm. here and also seeing what the culture is becoming. Like, this next wave of girls? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Levels. it's yeah. amazing. Bro, and how they're, they're getting younger and better, yeah. <laughs> like, younger, like, yeah. better, and they're also like just like we're skateboarders. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. we're not, they're uniting. Yeah, we're not girls that skateboard. We're skateboarders, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're so down for each other in ways that none of you can even comprehend. Yeah, that like get out of our way. It's we're reminding like, me of the 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 speed of skateboarding in the early 90s yes and how fast it was going and how everybody was creating henry sanchez was going crazy everybody the it was going nuts yeah. in the early and that's what i feel like we are witnessing real time right now with the girls and the women skating it's they're going crazy. to they're the they're going to be they're going to put skateboarding on its back on their back and tow it into whatever this next phase of it looks it's like it's such mm -hmm. amazing to and watch. the industry needs to like yeah. Folks need to really, really appreciate that this is this is such a unique mm -hmm. and powerful moment that's taking place Big time. before it's, our very every time they every time they get on the progression <laughs> is cool. But it's also a bigger scale too. Like it, it was everything back then was like who was cool, like whatever. Now it's like just 
the progression is going on and you can just be who you are. That's the part. For sure. Yeah. For sure. That's 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 the part. But you know what's yeah. really rad is the camaraderie. You know, yes, like yeah. you see everybody in other sports and like if you saw this last Olympics, you saw everybody cheering for everybody within the sector of skateboarding, whether it be the the vert, whatever. They the were park, just yeah. cheering for each other. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And like mm-hmm. I don't see that in other sports like that. No, no I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't it exist. exist. And I think it's it's unique uh, to our world. And it's to me, it's just exciting to see what this next next what it means to this next next generation, mm-hmm. and particularly these young girls, man. But yeah. it's, so and it's also funny. the you know it's the women like the Lizzie Armantos, the Leticias, like it's the those women that have opened these doors. For these young girls to see straight up what's possible yeah you know? Carabeth, shout out to Carabeth Burns yeah 100 yeah. yeah. i mean i'm leaving a lot off <laughs> no, Alyssa, you know Alyssa, I mean? like, Alyssa, Alyssa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alyssa really <laughs> yeah. first time. and she percent. was out here dolo yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. dolo in the streets yeah. <laughs> real talk for sure yeah. it's great I'm, I'm i'm loving every minute and i'm here for it yeah, yeah. It's, it's great yeah. It's it's really really cool. Let me ask you another question. Um, we had talked about X Games. You were not there for thirteen years, mm. and then all of a sudden you're back with Tony, Jason Ellis. How did that feel? I mean, are we going? Uh, are we opening up a new door here? Are we're, we? We're possibly opening up uh, a, a a longer second chapter. Okay. It was really experimental for me. Um, I was really humbled when when MSP that bought the X Games bought the X Games and they there was that big announcement that X that X Games had sold mm-hmm. and that ESPN would just be the broadcast partner. Um like five days later, I got a phone call. Wow. I was like like well first I got like DMs and text messages just like, hey, mm-hmm. um there's this dude from this company that bought X Games. They want to talk to you. And I was like, hmm. y'all just you're calling me first <laughs> right Ooh. away <laughs> and i've been gone for almost a decade have you been keep have were you keeping up with x games and how it was doing and what the vibe was like i like you said before like bittersweet i tuned out tuned out for uh, for a couple of I years could see that. like it was too hard to watch right and also you're watching it from a from a deeply critical bitter place so yeah i kind of tuned out but then mm. i would i would I was watch, and then I, I saw sort of the quality of the programming becoming less and less and less and and diff, different, and so I couldn't really watch it for too long. You know, It'd be happy to see cool shit, but like it no longer was like impacting the culture. Sure, mm-hmm. it was like okay, it's a thing that happens, but it's not, it's not a destination anymore for the culture. So I kind of just had let it go. So when they called and they said. We want to restore it back to that, and we feel like we can't do that without you. That was their opening line. Wow. I was like, what are y'all, really? It went from you're not the face of this to you are the face of this. They're like, we need the face of this to come back. Crazy. And it was extremely humbling. Um, We had some healthy conversations. They... Didn't really know what they were doing in Aspen, but they also like had owned it for two months, and like now they got to figure out how to do a broadcast, and it was okay. not, <laughs> not overnight. It was not sweet. All right, but they listened. Um, I convinced them to hire Bruno Musso. Bruno Musso is awesome. Yeah, um, this summer um, to produce the the host set and, and help them with storytelling and a few other things, and we were able to get the ship back on track and have it everything even all the way down to like camera angles Mm. and really like making sure that you're showcasing what's taking place it's funny that you keep going back to the camera angles that's that's some people don't think about that but that's so important oh there's nothing crazy there's nothing i hate more than like chopped off yeah legs and like if you're gonna do a push in like why why are we Unless you're going to be giving an opportunity for someone to to help the the viewer understand mm-hmm. what's taking place on that ledge or in the air or whatever, like give me context, like and you've got to. Te- if people don't know 
the hows and whys and you don't have people who film skateboarding mm -hmm. on a regular basis like being able to at least consult and give context then of course people are just going to do what they what they do it's like the commercial with the ollie over the car but it's a full not make <laughs> and you're just like shaking your head like oh my god i can't believe we're being represented <laughs> they like use this the bail. They use oh the bail. my god yeah yeah that that part like they definitely use the bell because they're like oh it just looks more critical the board is like halfway it's, it's, flipping it's, it's, yeah it's dancing it's dancing <laughs> um and this this year like was exciting so we're um we're in talks and we'll see if if what that looks like okay to to do stuff in front of the camera and also work a little bit behind the so scenes. So this was um, the Ventura mm -hmm. was the the kickoff to that. Yeah. How did Tony Hawk and Jason Ellis get involved? Was that your call or was that part of the initial conversation? That was part of the initial conversations mm. of like, you know. They wanted to get a team together. Get the bird, man. Yes, they should. Get the, get you. First of all, we need the bird, man. <laughs> 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 you want to legitimize this thing then like, Call in the hawk, right? And you know, the the hawk has just an ability to come in and just—he's just incredible. Yeah. Like well, the fact that, like, what also like the presence that he has on camera to go with all of the rock stars, this his passion, his depth of passion about talking about skateboarding to. The, it's Tony Hawk telling you that this is rad. Knowledge and the and legendary knowledge. thing of nine hundred on the X Games yeah. all day, yeah. like. It, Press. I was like, make sure that every time we, the Birdman comes on, at some point we are pink nine hundred, yeah. pink nine hundred. Like pl play the clip. Yeah, hit yeah. people, trigger people back to where were you when this happened? Yes, yep. and it worked. It, it definitely worked. And Ellis was amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he just lends the 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 part that only Ellis can. Sure, that free and, spirit. Yeah, that free spirit. But he's also like seasoned in media yes, at this point, for sure. seventeen years. So he knows how to. Seventeen is a very, very common number at this yeah. point, man. <laughs> he's got this. Uh, he, he he's he was perfect, and um, the potential for I think developing more future talent from within the culture is part of what I want to be be a part of giving other folks an opportunity to have voices, whether mm -hmm. it be sideline, whether it be play by play, whatever it is, um, and help. I'm in that place where, like, now I get to put folks on. This I love is the that. way folks have put me on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, you're a good person to listen to because you know. I know. Yeah. It's crazy, man. But um, thank you. So we're working with the X Games now to try to. This is what I'm gathering. That's what you're saying. Yeah. We're going to try to. We're working to make a long term okay. relationship. Okay. Yes. In front of the camera and behind the scenes. Yes. Love that. That's 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 the present negotiations that are taking place love that they should definitely listen to you because hmm. well, that's why they're calling for well, sure the <laughs> what, what's the next X, X games australia or something uh, or japan 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 next then year australia? and then australia. and then australia and then um and i think we're gonna go back to ventura are they doing it's still winter too i'm oh, sorry i don't yeah, focus, winter, I don't focus in on yeah, that okay aspen. gotcha you gotcha. don't get shreddy dude i don't i'm not mm. i don't i don't know i've never been in the strap, pow pow for the, uh, you, you've never snowboarded before never snowboarded oh, you never you no. never no. taken it to steel on a snowboard never. take what the pow pow the snow no i mean but like in the park like taking it into to steel and rails and ledges on a snowboard Hell no. yeah Chris doesn't know the I, lingo. Oh, neither no, do I, I really have snowboarding I got, stuff. Literally, that, that's a yeah. snowboarding thing. Like, yo, do you hit steel? And I'm like, I'm 51 years old. I do not hit steel anymore. I thought I was no. cool with saying pow pow. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I ride the pow pow. I do spend that's a lot of time the, in, I'd, I'd in be the with pow pow. You. I'd be with you. Yeah. The pow pow no, was fun. I think I was always, I don't know, man. And call me whatever you want, but I was. I think I was always just too scared to like bust a knee out yeah. and yeah. ruin my yeah. career skateboarding just going snowboarding for a weekend i'd always hear the horror stories i do this event called culture shifters where we're trying to like really expand the the landscape of like for getting black and brown people on the hill because it's wiggity wiggity white in the mountains oh i saw that steezus <laughs> joined you. yes steezus yeah. was with us yeah. and then we got deshaun to come out oh, nice. oh, this he's, motherfucker he's amazing bro. in a day bro He's a world class. Oh, he's talented. Like a world class athlete, like yeah. who happens to skateboard. Yeah. He's also one of those people. Like you just see him walk by, and you're like, 
that guy's a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, something. What point does he guard. Do? Like, what, back, is, yeah. what does he do? Like, running back, like, something, right? And he happens to skateboard. And then you watch him. But by the end of the day, by the end of the day, when you watch a snowboarder who is athletically gifted but also doesn't know the range of the craft, you're just like, because ah, you can get broke real quick. Mm. And this dude was just like, in a day, I was. Ter- I told him, I was like, bro, if you came out and hung out with us for like a week, I would be terrified at what you could do. Wait, that, that was like, his first time. I don't. It wasn't his first time. I say, but it wasn't. He he had never like been been like he was sketchy when he first got on. Okay, and by the end of the day, Sean, yeah, Jordan. just just dude, man. He's the man, bro. Real talk, and he's just a fun. Freak. He's just a fun dude. To Happiest be guy on earth. Another good oh, energy, yeah. bro. That yeah, house, it's infectious. Who who always gives you the same sauce mm. every time he sees you? Yep. Yeah, he sits in the joy of of what it is that he has. Yep, and he's also like, and I'm a rapper. Yeah, yeah, and I'm and nice, decent, and, and I'm, I'm, and I'm nice with it. Straight mm-hmm. up, yeah. But this dude is a, f- yeah, freak. Yeah, it's Trey Fifty on this wobbly ass deck. No, no, no problem. <laughs> dude, what? What the tallest fuck? Nose blood? No, nah, he's the man. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, he's. There are some people that you're just like, yes, I want you to have all of the things. When I saw him walking mm-hmm. in the, um, the Louis Vuitton show mm-hmm. in Paris. I literally like screamed at my laptop. I was like, <laughs> "Yes, uh, yes, Pharrell." Yeah. Like, maybe you've kind of been a low key culture vulture, but this is a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done, man, for sure. I do want to talk about we we touched on your your pops a mm-hmm. little bit, but I want just people to know out there that I was doing some a little bit of research on him, and the song came up. Grazing in the grass. Yes. Yeah. And I didn't know that, that that song is so recognizable. Oh bro. yeah, we can't play it obviously we, with copyright issues. But anybody listening to this, go put that on right now, and you will know the song that I'm talking yeah, about. Yes. Grazing in the grass. Your parents played it for you. Uh, your uncles, someone. It's been it's been a part of your family. Legendary, uh, leg- legendary song. So it was the number one song in 1968 for mm-hmm. 13 weeks. Wow, <laughs> number one. Like so, when I remember when I was talking earlier about like the rock star ness that he was experiencing, and then 69, this band, the Sisters of Mercy, did a cover of it, and that went number one for like 17 weeks. There it goes again. And yeah, he was yeah just living the entirety of his best life. If you go and see. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja uh, Turtle movie. My dad's got a big song in it. This okay. song called Riot. That also, with the new one that's in the out? new one. Wow. The new wow. one. Yeah, Pop's got a huge song called Riot. <laughs> Amazing. They called us last year and we're like, "What? Yes, of course, absolutely." So when that happens, does that go to like the estate? Of yeah, you guys? yeah, okay. it goes to the family. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. There's some songs that don't um, because of the music business, but that happened to be one that we were like. Check one out for us. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, but it's just so dope that like another generation of kids that are so like passionate about um, TMNT uh, gets to experience, and they did a dope soundtrack for that Amazing. for that entire movie. So Have that you was seen huge. It already. Did they give you a little preview? Huh? Yeah, it's out. Yeah. Oh, it's out. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, out yeah, right it's now. Out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm no and then Earl Sweatshirt did a cover of that song. Mm. Um, and he's the homie because his father and my father were best friends for okay. a, a wow. long time. Oh no way! Our fathers, so our fathers died a week apart from each other. Wow! And they lived across the street from each other. Whereabouts did you? In South Africa. In South Africa. In Johannesburg. What? So like Crazy. I had always like I lived in LA for a long time. I knew Atiba was 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 close with them and and that they were skate adjacent, but I had never met Tebe Earl. Huh. <gasps> So I'm in South Africa grieving my father who just passed. And then we hear that his father dies. And then we hear that Earl's coming to South Africa. And, but we're dealing with our own grief. And we had this house that we rented that we were doing sort of awake so people could come and comfort the family. And I'm standing at the top of the stairs at this house. And I look downstairs and there's this skinny dude with dreadlocks who's just standing by himself. And he looks up at me. I look down at him. I wave, he wave, I came down. We gave each other like the biggest, longest hug because suddenly like we are 
we're meeting, we've known about each other for a long time, but we're meeting under the circumstances that you could never even imagine. Mm. Like both our fathers have just, who we've had interesting relationships with, are both gone in the span of like a week of each other and across the street from each other. And so we were just like, yo, roll with us. And so he just hung with us, man, for like a month. Wow. He ended up staying in South Africa for longer and just hung with my family. And we hung out and listened to music. And and afterwards, he came back home from that. And he reached out and he was like, I want to do something with Riot on my album as a tribute to, um, to Uncle Hugh. And so on his last album, that ended up being the last song. And like people went crazy for it, for like this sort of chop screwed um version that he did wow. of of um with riot of my dad playing uh -huh. um and yeah he, i think he did an interview or something and he was like yeah so was my uncle <laughs> and so <laughs> so suddenly all of a sudden like all these people like yo you never told me you were family with earl <laughs> 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 um but in our culture like that's what that's it is goes. you yeah, know yeah. That's, that that's how it is and you know we've remained close Amazing. since but yeah, that was crazy. Well, wow. anybody listening to this, go check out yeah, man, these songs that we're talking about. Yeah, right now. just throw throw Hugh Masekela in your yep. your Spotify or your Apple or your your Tidal or yeah. YouTube or whatever you get down, and, and you'll go down. And, not only uh, grazing battle. in the grass, but I was listening to a bunch of stuff, and I, I was I was grooving with it, and then that came on. I was like, I know this. No yeah, <laughs> way. Yeah. I was blown it's away. It's a big, dude. big, 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 big song. Huge. Still to this day. I was telling these guys, I was like, man, this sounds like it would have been like in a girl of chocolate video, like oh, early yeah. on in those. Yeah, you know, you totally that time frame of just, for sure. You know, for sure. I'm always, I was always baffled that um, no one ever skated to him. It's man. a great song. Man. Yeah, I was like, man, this is. It would have to be a part, though. Yes. Oh yes. yeah. 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 I don't like think you, anybody cause, could cause use that. It's a long song. You'd have to just be like. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a cool like intro song too to a, like a dope video. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah either or. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 It's a fun song. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a fun song. Who could you imagine skating to it? Hmm. Good question. Who could uh, skate to Grayson? Somebody would like really cool. Um like linked up street combos like are we talking about like now or, or or past generations or like if they called up and like hey can i get rights to this song You'd like, i mean i that. would throw it at costin immediately costin i can see chico rick. like, like oh yeah chico yeah for yeah sure. rick yeah. howard howard for Maybe. sure shout out to rick howard the surfer yeah when i see rick howard these days it's only at the beach He's really <laughs> fully invested. he is in it fucking about that <laughs> i love that. life I he love is. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll see him and he's like <laughs> in the water and we st strictly speak as surf bros. Dude. <laughs> Sh shakas all the time. Dude. You got, you got this wave, bro. You got shakas. And he's, he's pretty focused. Like mm -hmm. he's, up, and he'll, sh I'll see him at places that are clearly out of his, like you got up early today uh, to drive to come. Wow, I didn't realize to, you that. You know, okay. he is. Now he's been Howard. taking trips. He went to Costa Rica with Chico. He's like gone to Mexico. Yeah, he's like, about that yeah, life. He's in it. Oh, I love that. Dude. Yeah, I love that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of skaters who like low key. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be low key anymore. But there was a time if you skated that like your surfing had to be kind of a low sure, key. No, sure, hobby. Oh, nowadays yeah. everybody uh, Mason Silva, uh, Kern Cables, Kern Cables all out there doing it. Kern Cables is not a casual. Right. He's he's, he's gnarly. He's, he's gnarly. super gnarly. Actually, yeah. like. He's family of it. Really, I think, really, really. I feel really like good. all the older cats surf too. Steve Olson, yeah. all those, all those dudes. Alyssa surfs. Love it. Alyssa Steamer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sick. yeah. Van England. Van England yeah. surfs. Yeah. Yeah. No, everybody's definitely stepped outside of their box in a sense of like, if they have a hobby outside of skateboarding, they're doing that and they're they're showing you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Everybody's taking up golf now. You know what I mean? Like every. I feel like everybody and their mom is golfing. I feel now. like this whole modern street golf culture is all born of skateboarding. Straight up street golf yeah uh, it's like if you uh, I, play, I played in this tournament sick. i played in this tournament um street golf would be a whole yeah thing. yeah, yeah. Street golf. yo did that we just did we you. just become wealthy <laughs> you know what we're gonna cut this part we're gonna cut this part <laughs> <laughs> yo street golf would be hard I'm just, did i just <laughs> street golf street golf no wow 
PSG. We better get a big you old should. basket. Yeah, got the mind wandering. Hey, Yo, we check, might have some here. Check the trademark. <laughs> check right now. Check the trademark. Well, we got <laughs> street golf. We got a week and a half. We got our, just comes out. We got our announcer right here. <laughs> yeah. We got oh, the right announcer. Here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is a win-win right now. I just played in this hype golf tournament, and you would have thought that you were at... Um, Oh, this last one? Yeah, I played Shout the last one. Shout out to Ray one. Matei. All yeah, day. Ray. All day. Ray is the man. But you would have thought that you were at uh, Project Trade Show. Yeah. Like mm. it was that. The way it was set up. Right? Yeah, it was like a complex con of golf. Yep. I heard it really was, good. I fucking yeah. so vibes that I missed were, it. Thank he, you, Ray. He, he comes from skateboarding, right? Yeah. Yes, he yeah. does. Hell yeah. yeah, big time. I've known him since oh, you yeah, know New since York. the Alpha days. Um, OG New York. Him and Ali. Him and Ali Asha were really good friends. But yeah, that whole culture is it's so cool to see skateboarding's influence mm. um and just how the square like golfers look at like w w the type of people it brings out the golf and they're just baffled oh yeah they're just like wait what's happening what's there's a there's a transition in happen very what's happening right to now? our thing yeah. wait do they look do, honestly do they look at the newer generation of like golfers like sk they like, have to like do they like what's going on here yeah to. if you look at like the influencer golfers they all like dress like in this Street golf, yeah. Trademark, street golf, <laughs> trade, <laughs> trademark, bitches. They don't. They definitely don't like that. The street golf, golf yeah. They don't like that shit. That's for sure. And they're like killer golfers. Yeah. That look like they just walked off of Fairfax. Yeah, it's amazing. Street golf, street golf. It's it's, it's a, always been there, but it's now it's like man. really showing itself right now. Yeah, it's truly showing itself. Do you play? Yeah. What you guys know about Tiger Hood? I've heard of him. Is that a thing? Yeah. No way. He's a street Where golfer. Yeah. Golfing in the What's up with street golf though? The, uh, the Malibu. genre. Malibu. Oh, look at that. They, oh, there's hit. copyright infringement. <laughs> are they, yeah, don't be telling nobody about this. Street are they golf. calling it? <laughs> are they calling it street golf? No, I, I, I just that was just random. No, we're gonna be Salemo basket yeah. Yeah. full of money. Yes, <laughs> that's oh, how did you become yeah. wealthy? Street golf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I came up with it. Because if I rolled in me right now with some dope ass merch oh, yeah. that said street golf, you guys would be like, what's that? Street golf. And why haven't we seen it yet? Yeah. It's right there, hanging under our noses. Trademark. We're buying this whole building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not going to kick us out, man. We still got a podcast to do about skateboarding. I have a question. Uh, for me, like growing up, hearing about you, Sal Kayla, like where where would, did it go back to Salema and why? It's a great question. Um, so I always went by Salema until I moved to California. And when I moved to Carlsbad, kids were like, Salema's too hard. Mm. They're like, so what? You could just see in their faces like <laughs> uh, three syllables. Ah, it's, it sounds so foreign. And... They would call me a salami and this and that. And then like maybe four or five days after I got to the school, this kid comes running up to me. He's like, dude, we figured it out. <laughs> like they were debating with They're like Sal. debating in the back. Like, what are we going to call this dude? You're Sal, bro. You're Sal. And everyone's like, yep. Yeah. And next thing you know, I'm walking down. The Hi, Sal. Hi, Sal. Yeah, Sal. And it was just like. Whoa. That was it. Like plastered huh. onto me. And you're like, you're, you're a teenager, you're trying to fit in, so you just go with it. But I would introduce myself to people as Salema, and they call me Sal. Oh, uh, okay. Cause, and girls especially, because, you know, you're like, my name's Salema. Mm. But they call me Sal, and they always would be like, I like Salema, though. Well, Salema is a, <laughs> a good name. You can call me yeah, Salema. Yeah, that would be you. Yeah. <laughs> you can call me Salema. These, these fools over here call me Sal. But you could call me Salema. <laughs> it's a good name. And like yeah, it. they they trust they always use Salema. Um but then when I started doing television, uh especially like a few years, they would always put my name as Salema on the screen. And I was like, people want to call me Sal on camera, whatever, but like I want people to know my name. Mm. And uh an executive uh told me that if I wanted to be more digestible, like to Middle America. He threw up the quotes. He's like, don't you want to be a star? Sal Masica. It's just easier for folks. And I, rem I remember how like weird that felt in the moment. And I acquiesced. I was like, okay. And suddenly, like, you know, you're Sal. Mm. But it never felt good. Interesting. Like, it always felt like literally like, you know, when the chalkboard, <laughs> like the chalk breaks and then the accidental oh. scratch. Oh. Like, ah! <laughs> That's how it felt. 
whenever people called me Sal. Like, I just could never. Even when I would say it, I'd be like, oh, my God. I remember one time my mom called me. I said, absolutely, don't you. You can't. Ever. My brothers always called me. All my friends call, have always called me Salema. And there were, there were different times where I tried to go back to Sal. Mm. Excuse me, to Salema. And, you know, your, your very well-meaning agents and managers are like, whoa, listen, the brand. Got to think about the brand. We built the brand. <laughs> the brand. <laughs> That's amazing. The, 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 the brand. And I'm like, ah. It was the same conversation before I cut my dreads. Mm. Like two things you cannot do. Can't cut the locks. Stop talking about the Salema stuff. The bags. The brand. So you just kind of let it go. But you get older and you just want to like stand in your skin. Mm -hmm. And it was 2020 um, in the wake of the summer of George Floyd when and Ahmaud Arbery and just this whole larger conversation that started to take place about like, are y'all going to actually like accept that we're not going anywhere and that we are who we are and that in most spaces we are treated differently. Ask to to prove that we need to, be, to that we belong in spaces or adapt to make other people feel comfortable mm -hmm. that we're there. And I just woke up one day, especially like it was after George Floyd in the midst of every and shit was hot. Yeah, was a lot of shit happened. And I just said, you know what? That's it. It's a wrap. I am no longer going to be digestible for the brand. Mm -hmm. And if that means that the brand is no good anymore, like people don't want to fuck with the brand, like, all right, cool. I'll go do something else. Because if you're telling me that the only, in the same way that like, they told me I, when I cut my dreads, it was a wrap. Ah, you just blew it. Like that's, that's it. There goes, what? there goes, yeah. there goes the block. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And people would be on my social media like, you sell out. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> people call me and sell out. Because I cut my hair. Cut when that, I cut my hair. Jets. Oh, my God. Dude. It was time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like... I'm done. Also, I didn't want to be a dude who was creeping with dreads. Like, that's, no, just commit. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, I just, I, I, in the midst of what the conversation that was taking place, it just really made something very, very loud in me be like, no more. I think it was like literally like the ancestors, like being like, that's it. Mm. And my, I was named after my grandfather. Salema, who I got to meet when I went to South Africa for the first time. And then after he met me, he was like, I'm good. And he passed at like 90. He just wanted to wait to meet me. Wow. Oh, wow. My father was a political exile and couldn't go back to South Africa for 30 years because of apartheid. So that's why he was in the States in the first place. Mm. So you start to really like just stop and like really sit in the entirety of your how you got here and who you are yeah. as opposed to how people see and view you mm -hmm. and i just was like yeah I'm, I'm done i called everybody i was like it's not a discussion it's some be salema from here on out to come hell or high water like that's it i got on social media i gave a like a phonetic tutorial on on instagram where i was like hey everybody <laughs> <laughs> my name is salema mabena masakela i'm gonna say it one more time slowly Salema, Mabena, Masakela. And from here on forward, I will be known by my given name, Salema. Thank you. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't think it was going to reverberate the way it did. I just thought like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I've done that, but what was interesting is that literally I, it was like I grew two inches. I felt like taller. I felt like comfortable in my body in a way when like people would have asked my name or whatever, I just, Salema. And it just felt good. And then when people started calling me Salema, I was like, yes, that's it's me. Working. It's working. <laughs> it's working. And I'm still working. 
um the craziest part is when like people who've grown up with me calling me sal have made the adjustment and they want me to know like people were coming up to me at x games being like salama i've been watching you since i was a kid that shit makes you emotional because you're like oh you see me you you're actually choosing to see me the person outside of just the person that you knew from television that you had maybe adopted a relationship with and you're actually interested in who i am today mm -hmm. and um i was blown away by how many people reached out to me and told me stories about their names and being a, a black kid or a brown kid or mm. a, a kid from another culture and moving into a predominantly white neighborhood or culture where like they're like yeah we need a name do you need a name that we can rock with because that sounds too crazy and i had someone say to me something a few years ago in this conversation before i changed it they're like yo if they can say charcuterie <laughs> <laughs> they can say salema yeah, it's true. not a hard name to it's say damn true. <laughs> <laughs> And that one really hit. Yeah, I was like, that's a good one. You're damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And like um, that. yeah, man, it just if it it just it just feels it feels good, man. I, I didn't know it was gonna feel as good as it mm. as it as it as it does. And I know my dad is smiling. He never called me Salema. I mean, called me Sal. Mm. He would call me Cell. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He called me Cell, but he hated Sal. Mm. He's like. The least they can do is honor the E, man. I kind of, I thought, I, I kind of figured it was like a stage, stage name, kind of the Sal. It was a know? bro name, like yeah, it was yeah, my, yeah. like it. That was how I f was able to fit into Carlsbad. Mm -hmm. People were like this is Sal. Sorry, bro, Sal. Dude, it's so and, bro. It's and, Sal. And, and, <laughs> it flows out their tongue. Like, yeah, like yeah. the way you're saying it. Like that, yeah. And sometimes people look at you like, Sal, you're Sal? Are you Italian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Sicily. Like, you know, North Africa is right next door. But th there was a thing with it, like, where people would, they, they would introduce me as Sal and, and then be like, he's a different kind of black guy like use those words he surfs like he's like us he's more like us you know like and say that like <laughs> patting you on the back like to disarm folks of like who's this black guy well actually to make him feel more comfortable he's black light <laughs> <laughs> black light this is sal uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was a real real th it was a real thing you know, it was Jeez. a real, real but thing. Did that make you feel some type of way? Yeah. Yeah. Like terrible. For sure. Like, and you, but you're also like fighting for identity and acceptance. And so you're trying to like. Yeah, you're gonna navigate it, through that. You navigate through that. And it was, um, it was a trip. It, it, I mostly experienced it making my way through surfing. Cause just there was like nobody. Yeah. And in skateboarding, yeah. like everybody's from everywhere. Everyone's got like amazingly fucked up, beautiful names. I'm sure um, there's some black server. Is there? Like as there, far as like that, uh, like that do it. Yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, like Mikey February. Okay, so we got yeah, Mike. We got, got some, you know, we got Mikey. Some out there Mikey Feb. Bro, <laughs> that's a you tough don't name. Have, <laughs> you don't have to surf to watch Mikey February surf, and not, and be like, I actually, you watch Mikey February surf, you're like, I want to surf now. Okay, that's tight. Love it. He's the nicest. Head, head to toe, probably the most. The, the biggest dude on on vans he was the first black surfer to make the world tour he's from south africa oh, um i was just about to ask that where's he from? yeah man but mikey february uh is is the guy on a pro level there he is young yeah he's like 25 get him just super stylish um yeah he's 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 beautiful to watch you know it'll Look take a matter of time you know and we, we kind of scared the water a little bit but you know yeah no we're doing it <laughs> i went and did a surf trip to senegal last year um and there's an incredible there's a kid named sharif fall this guy looks like he for like like whatever the 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 the, the avatar like the the the, the nabu navil like he's actually a real version of that like six foot six this kid, he, I'm, I'm, I saw him on Instagram. I was like, how can you be six six and do airs like that? Like he's 
a athletic freak and then i started talking to him on instagram and then my my girl surprised me for my birthday the year before last and she said we're going to senegal so you can go and surf with these dudes. oh wow. way That's yeah wow. Damn. and so i went and surfed with with him with sharif and and just got to you're sitting in the water and you're like no there's just nothing but nothing but people that look like me <laughs> and no one cares like we're not even paddling up to each other. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 I see you over there. <laughs> like they're like ah, oh, another like who's this dude? Yeah. Like it was it was awesome, you know. And then when I go to surf in South Africa now, in the wake because during apartheid, black people couldn't go to the same beaches as white people. Like couldn't go in the water unless you were working on the beach. You couldn't be at the beach in leisure. Until the mid '90s, psycho. It's crazy. And all of the beaches in South Africa, like where the that were protected with shark nets, were the white beaches, not the black ones. <laughs> Jeez. So, you know, Mikey February's dad was like a, a he was like a, tr- a trailblazer to even like be able to surf where he was surfing. And then Mikey finally comes along free of the burden of apartheid. And of course, like you got access to world-class waves and your father, like it, the, it begins now. But people, mm. when they were telling the story, when he, when he made it to the tour, I'm like, <laughs> y'all are missing the fact that the only reason why this dude is late is because of like legal, a legalized racial, racist system that the whole world was cool with for 40 years. Crazy. That's the only reason. Africa's got more surfable coastline than any other place in the world but it's never like shown and recognized no yeah and also like black people like traditionally in these countries are water people like can navigate fishing boats and canoes and like the wildest seas i've seen it in ghana i've seen it like historically they were when, when the explorers like showed up in ghana they saw folks riding boards in Ghana in like the 17th century and wrote about it. Mm-hmm. But when you don't have those stories. No, then you get the stereotype that black people can't swim. It's like, do you think when they put those people on a boat that they couldn't swim, that they weren't fishermen? <laughs> and and when you brought them to America and the the manner in which they scared scared people on these slave ships was by throwing them into the ocean and feeding them to the sharks. Yeah. And if you swam away as a slave, you would be punished. So, of course, over generations, people are going to develop an abject fear, mm, yeah. like an ancestral fear yeah. in their relationship with water. You see the images in the 60s during as, as segregation is ending and black kids getting in a pool that had been previously whites only and they're throwing in bleach into the pool of uh, is 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 now like my grandma going to be like yes you can go swimming no i'm right. going to protect you at all costs right so this whole like stigmatic idea of like black people don't swim and all that shit like that's constructed definitely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, you know it's wholly constructed and i i remember like the novelty that it was being black and surfing and people were like i didn't I, a kid literally said to me in school like, at carlsbad when i said i was learning to surf he looked at me like but, but y'all don't even swim. You, he said, Whoa. you people don't even swim, bro. That's like, crazy, bro. what do you mean you're gonna learn to surf? He was perplexed. <laughs> like, and, and, you, I, and you believe that? And I was like, you're about to find. Out. <laughs> <laughs> like that shit lit such a fire under my ass. But constantly, you know, people being in shock that like wait how do you know about this sport that you can commentate it or like oh you do it oh I didn't know that you do it. <laughs> I thought Crazy. ESPN taught you about snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know that you do it because how could that even possibly ESPN be? ESPN teaches yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta teach this guy. I, I told you, man. They taught me a lot of shit in those journalism schools. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. exciting to see the way. Um, there's just a huge movement. There's this. Uh, there's this guy named Brick House, um, who started a, a company, a movement called Ebony Beach Club. He throws the most incredible like blackest beach parties ever at doc wilder beach complete with like 
surf lessons so people folks can come and learn yeah. and get sur- any color is welcome but like you're getting instructed by black and brown folks we're talking about right, right down here like right here at yeah. Dockweiler. really pull it up pull up ebony beach club and oh, right you'll right here we got it right and here. you'll Boom. you'll you'll see that's amazing but if you go to the ig you'll see like the parties and he so he started this brand and the the, the city just shut him, shut him down what got too big yeah because look at all this black joy mm, that's why 3,000 people at the beach. No, there's never been an incident of violence in any way, shape, or form. Um, but it, they were so overwhelmed. And he's about actually showing like the history of the culture of black people at the beach in California. There was an Ebony Beach Club, like literally oh, really? in the 50s, that um, they shut down. <laughs> I don't burnt know how down. to get to their, their Instagram. Maybe we got to type in their Instagram. Mm. It's it. We'll, we'll get it up there. But um, yeah, they're... In, in, so there is a movement that's taking place. This mm-hmm. this next generation that is like, yeah, not only are we coming out here and, and coming to the beach, but we're actually going to like, we are going to dictate a new style of yeah. what it means to like. And if y'all want to come and experience it our way, please, you're welcome. I'm through. But this idea of like having to assimilate oh, here we go. in how you show up, yeah, is uh is crazy. That's but a yeah, beautiful thing. but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a vibe, you know. They out here twerking <laughs> yeah, poles, the whole shit. Like he's de- he, bro. He has an El Camino uh-huh. that he pulls up, and uh, DJ's out the back of his El Camino, oh, and it's just a vibe. We got the surf lessons going on. It's That's it's so cool. the most incredible. The first one I went to. I was sitting there. He's like, "You good, bro?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm good." Like, I was overwhelmed, emotional, because I could have never, I could have never experienced this growing up. Like, right. when I showed up, it was like, "Who's gonna talk some shit to me today?" Right. Like, who's gonna? Well, especially in Carlsbad. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a vibe. It's a yeah. vibe. You know, what I've that noticed way. in surfing, just in general, is like it's very intimidating sport. It's super. Well, you got all that weird localism. And yeah, people mm-hmm. thinking that because they live there, they own a space, and yeah. then they don't want to understand that, like, yo, the only reason why we don't live here is because they made it so that we don't live yeah. here. This shit ain't like this shit ain't cheap. <laughs> it ain't, it's not cheap, and also like they wouldn't give out loans to 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 black people specifically in those neighborhoods. Like that's how they got around. Once segregation ended, they were like, all right, so it's legal for them to hang out with us. We won't give them loans to buy homes in this neighborhood, these neighborhoods, and na- these neighborhoods, and we'll make them safe white spaces. Mm-hmm. Like, straight up, that's what it was. Definitely. So how are you going to create generational experiences or generational wealth to be passed down to have these experiences when one of the last bastions that they created for safety after segregation was over was the outdoors so like the mountains and the ocean will make these like spaces that we can question as to why you're here yeah mm. much as it has always been you guys can move 10 in miles down in the, yeah in you, the inner city you'll be over there yeah. uh, but don't 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 come out this way mm-hmm. and so of course like that with all the historical trauma of course it's going to be that way yeah you know that's why skateboarding is so light years ahead yeah. light years yeah. Yeah. it's just light years mm ahead in that there's just like no room for it like mm-hmm. it just it, i don't skateboarding actually couldn't exist without the fact that it crosses all the lines like the only yeah. way skateboarding yeah. grows is the is it's open source there's no gatekeeping true yeah. mm-hmm. skateboarding is an open source platform that is constantly always going to be reinvented and reinterpreted and yes yeah, some japanese kid named yuto <laughs> is gonna show up and be like watch this shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know or what's the more more maurice kid the the french i can't think of his name Aurelian? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. Yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> he could fly. What yeah. the he could fuck fly. is yeah, that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. He he literally flies. You know what yeah. I mean? And like it's always it's just this 
open source shit mm-hmm. that like you know someone's gonna come uh, Raisa yeah, or yeah. or whatever like that's the beauty of it like oh, there's yeah, no yeah. neighborhood of bros who could be like we're the we're the definition of what this culture is yeah. and if you want to do it you better come be like us or get out mm. and that's what surfing was for mm. literally almost like I don't know 75 years I always refer back to like when we talk about that kind of stuff it's like Vincent Malou I don't know if you've heard of him but yes. he's he grew up in France, no concrete, no concrete. He didn't have any place to skate, but he found a place to skate and he would do it so much. And then his parents finally paved the driveway. What was and that look like? look at him now. Gnarly. Crazy. <laughs> He's one of the gnarliest, consistent skaters I've ever well, seen. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. No concrete, but he made it happen. Wow. Found a way to um, skateboard. The first time that he that felt pop on concrete. Oh, dude. <laughs> he might. He probably got scared and had to bail his board. He's like, what am I doing <laughs> yeah, up yeah, here? Yeah. <laughs> I love stories like that, though. That's, yeah. it's just that, that's skateboarding. That's skateboarding. Man. And that's yeah. why it, it is so special. It is. Yeah. It, the, it's just constant. It, it, it's open source, and it's it without reinvention, it doesn't exist. Mm. You can't you can't gatekeep if you want to live in the past. People are, like it honors its past, but it is allergic to remaining rooted in it. Mm-hmm. And that I think is what makes skateboarding wonderful. Yes, agreed. Damn, Salema, Masakela, look at this up here on the <laughs> nine club. Let's wow. go. Mm. I'm gonna give you the shaka right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, this guys, been one of those. That's yeah, sure. this has been one. Dude, of, yeah, it's a great time. Can man. we? Thank you. Give yeah. you some nine club stuff to take home. With yes, you, dude. Kelly, will you do yeah. the honors, please? What, what size are we rocking? XL. XL. Go yeah, here. that's very, very generous and kind of oh, y'all we got folks. You, and, man. Um, yeah, like I said at the outset, like a real, real, real honor. Um, Likewise, the honor's all ours. Straight up, I mean, this is why we do this. Yeah, you know I mean, it's cool, and I yeah. and and I just like from the bottom of my heart, like I just really want to say thank you to the skateboarding community for um, for always making me feel like the little bit that I do has mattered in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. It's tremendously humbling because. Skateboarding ain't out here like trying to give out flowers for free, you know. So like, you know, to to be here is that's what it really it, it means to me, you know. I'm looking oh, forward yeah. to. I mean, not only the past. Oh, we got the now uh, jean oh, and the socks. Come on, man. let's come go. On, come on, dude. Hold wow. On. Oh, that's the that's the new oh, gotta... that's the that's the new Yeti now yes. jean. Yes. 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 Plastic. Hold on, hold on, That's hold the, on. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, I'm not only looking. I what you've accomplished already, you know, and, but I'm also looking forward to the future and what the future holds with X Games and how you trying to work in the back end of that too. And you know, let's let's bring this back. Let's let's get this going again. You know? Thanks, man. I, I, I can't I, wait. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to do what I can. Um, to coalesce as many talented folks as I can to to build what this next thing looks like. Here's the thing that I'm, I always think about too, is like, you know, outside looking in, we don't know what's going on. We don't know who's X gaming it. We yeah. don't know who's do touring it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we don't, skaters only know about the contest and it's right. nice, it's always nice to know who's behind it you know and if they're a core skateboarders or they have something to do with skateboarding or if they're just a suit right we just want to know yeah you know and so it's nice to know that somebody is there you know someone is potentially going to be there long term there we go (laughs) there we go (laughs) there we go thank you dude hold the flag for yes that that means that means a lot it's a little warm at the moment but it is going to be a little chilly here so we got the uh the nine club 
crew neck here for you, right here. Right he's here. getting merged. He's getting. Bl- I'm getting blessed. <laughs> <laughs> getting the nine club blessing. Yes. All right. Wow. You already know. You already know. Wow. Right Come on, take that. Take that. Take that. Take, take, that, that, <laughs> take that. Take that. Take Look that. Look at that. Official. Yes. Official. Yes. It's been a great one, bro. <laughs> I'm whispering in the mic like I they can hear me <laughs> yeah. in the phone. Ooh. Socks. Yeah. Stance. You Look at that. Use Stance. Those. And orange is a very mm. underused cover. Color. Oh, I I agree wholeheartedly. Um, very morning coffee. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Got the mug. My girl gets very uptight with Ooh. how many um, uh, coffee mugs <laughs> that I have. But this one. one's this one's one more. One yeah, more one to more. the collection. One more, and it's not going in storage. And we got no, 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 no. Keep that on deck. And we got right. the new, the new Yeti joint Ooh, right this there. This is this is this is that shit right here. You already know. I'm a I'm a huge fan of 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 Yeti. I saw that they made this new mm-hmm. their own version of like some Yeti Nalgene that kills all Nalgene. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, it's the best. I, and I got the nine club one. Let's go. Let's, yes. let's go. I'm, I'm on the team. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, you're Welcome. on. You're you're on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm on the team. I gotta get a photo. This is um. Dude. This is big. This is real big. And thanks for your patience with me, guys. What do you mean? I found I- a DM from Kelly from like. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> From like a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, they reached out to me <laughs> like ages ago. It's you all know, good. You know the what, though? I'm a. Jerome just said it there. I'm a firm believer of timing. It happens when it's supposed to happen. For sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, and this is. This is the, literally like. Oh, this is great. This is this is the time. It's like the Kim Kardashian I, thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that, that timing, bro. Really. Bang. Yes. yes. <laughs> Salima, thank you so much yeah, for man, coming on the show. Great, Doors always open. We'd love to have you back anytime. I would love to uh, come back at, at, at another time as well. This is inspiring, by the way. Thank you. Like super inspiring. Like I, I, I come here and now I'm like, you better go get your shit together. <laughs> oh, because by the way, we did we had we didn't mention go check out your podcast. Yes, the What yeah. Shapes Us yeah. podcast. What Shapes Us podcast available anywhere podcasts are downloaded. Yeah, in all all of, all of the places that you get a podcast. YouTube you can get mine. YouTube coming. Okay, uh, this coming month. Soon? Yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, and then um on is it you have a YouTube channel already? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. What shapes this podcast? What shapes this yeah. podcast? So, and then Spotify, yeah, Apple, Spotify, all okay. Apple, all that shit. Are we doing a weekly thing? What are we doing right now? Here? We are bi-weekly. Okay. You know, to get get our wheels turning, but we will get to weekly. Uh, I just had Nora Vasconcelos on. Perfect. Um, oh, awesome. That wait, how many episodes? That have you woman. Had? I got twelve. Beautiful. Um, but yo, that that um that Nora. She's special. Mm-hmm. One thousand mm-hmm. percent. She's Definitely. a special human being. Yeah. Yeah. My and my guests are kind of across the across the board. Nice. Yeah. But it's 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 gonna be a lot more broy here and now that I've got the this this I've got a the 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 red the Red Bull pipeline of athletes coming in. Yes. Ooh, nice. Yeah. You, you, we could expect more shakas. Is that more? What? A lot of shakas. <laughs> 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 Sal, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.